Hi guys, my name is Ferdy Korpshoek and this is my most complete tutorial so far. If you take a look at my channel over here, you see that my two best viewed videos are a WooCommerce tutorial and my Envol 2017 tutorial. And in this tutorial, I combined those two tutorials. In this video, I will show you how to create a beautiful website from scratch using an amazing WordPress theme. And after that, I will show you how to create a webshop from scratch using WooCommerce. If you follow this tutorial and you apply everything, you will have an amazing website in the end. And then you can start selling your products or services on the internet. In the next couple of minutes, I will show you what we are going to make. And if you like what you see, please like this video, subscribe for more upcoming videos. And then I wish you all the best in making a beautiful website with a web shop. This is the website we are going to make. Really nice first look. My logo over here, nice clean menu. I like to keep it clean and neat. If I scroll down, you see it's shrinking. So everywhere on the website, I can navigate really easily. Here I have my slider with beautiful images. I can also show a video here at the background. I will show you how you can do that. And here I have some information about my company and a call to action. You also can navigate by yourself through the slider. If I click on this arrow, I scroll down. Here I show my three services, photography, films, and web design. Some text about what I do. Here are some results of photos of websites I've made a video that is playing and if I want to have more information about one of the three services, I can click over here on the more information button. I scroll down, here I show my latest projects, this is my portfolio, here I show my latest blog posts, and if I hover over it I see the title and the date. Here we have widget areas, some text about my company, a like us on Facebook box, our latest project again and latest blog post. Here's some information about your website. You can add some terms of services over here. And here I have my social media icons. They're all in their own style. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And if I click here, I go up immediately. I go to the about page and here I will show you how you can create a simple text with a simple photo. Here again, you see that the background is fixed so you can see the whole picture. You can add a nice quote. Here I show you some testimonials of my clients. I can navigate through them. And if I want to change the look and feel of this, I can do it very easily. I go to edit the page. Now we're at the back end and you see all kinds of elements, a text block, a separator, special heading. And if I scroll down, I go to the testimonial element. I click on it. I want to change the view. Here it says testimonial style. I click here. I say make it a grid. How many columns? Two. I save it, update it, and I view the page again. And now it's looking like this. So you can change things very easily. I go to the services page. I will show you step by step how you can make this again with a nice parallax background. And as you see, I have the same information as on the home page because I will show you how to copy paste elements to different pages. If I click here on more information, I scroll down automatically and the same goes for films. So if I want to have more information about films, I click here and I scroll down. And if I want to have contact, I click over here and I go automatically down to the contact area. And as you see, the website is also optimized for smartphones or for tablets. So if I watch this on a tablet or a smartphone, you see it's looking amazing. And it works the same if I want to have more information about photography. I click over here and I go to photography. And if I want to have contact, I scroll down and I go to contact. There's also a really nice menu. It's looking like this. So even on smartphones and tablets, the website is responsive. I go to portfolio. Here I can showcase my services, photography, films. And if I want to see only the films, I click over here and I see only the films. Or photography, I see photography. And web design, only web design. So if I click over here, I can see all these images and I can navigate through them. But I also can show my photos like this. And if I think I don't want to have this sidebar, I click on edit portfolio entry. I scroll down and I say no sidebar. I save it. I view the portfolio entry again. And now it's looking like this. I can navigate to the next portfolio item like this. I can show a video over here. So that's how the portfolio works. If I go to the blog page then I have decided that I want to show my latest blog post over here like this. And you can navigate to different 
blog posts. I scroll down and here I can have a nice overview of my blog posts and I can click on them and go to a new page. Again, I can change the look and feel very easily. I go to edit the page, scroll down, go to the element blog posts and I can change the block style to grid layout, decide how many columns I want to have, two in this case, save it, update it and view the page. Now if I scroll down, it's looking like this. If I go to Oasis of the Seas, a simple text and two pictures. But if I go to Montana Lisiantes, I will show you how you can get the most out of your blog post by creating a video in the background and having a transparent header. If I want to change the color, I can do it very easily in the background. Some text and the video. Here I have an overview of the recent blog post in the sidebar. And I like as a Facebook widget. And then I go to the contact page. I will show you how to create an easy contact form. I have some information over here. And again, I like us on Facebook widget. I go to the shop over here and I will show you how to create six different kind of products. I will show you how to create a simple product, one product, one size. You can add as many to the cart as you want to. There are 10 left in stock. I will show you how to create categories, how to give a short description and a long description, give some additional information. If you click over here, you can navigate through all the pictures. If you go back to the shop, you have a nice hover effect. I will teach you how to create a variable product. So you have one product with more options, for instance, the size S and the color black, and it's $20, but I will show you that you can also change the price per size. So for instance, XL is $30. I will show you how to create a group product. So you have one parent product and beneath it, you have child products with different sizes and different prices. And I can say, I want to order five USBs with 128 gigabytes and only one with 32 gigabytes. I will show you how to create a digital product and I will show you how to create a downloadable product, for instance, an ebook or a song. I will show you how to create reviews. You can give stars, you can say something and you can respond to it. And last but not least, I will show you how to create an affiliate product. So you put a product on your website and if you click on it, you will go to a different website. And if your customer buys this product, then you will get a commission. Really nice way of doing business. I will talk about the sidebar. You can have sidebar widgets over here. For instance, a filter by price. So maybe I want to spend a maximum of $50. Then I drag this over here. I filter it. And then all the products between $15 and $50 will show up. So if I bring this up, I filter it again. You see there are only three products within this range. I'll talk more about widgets, top rated products for instance. And if you put something to the cart, over here, you see a widget which shows everything you have in your cart. So if I add this one, it will be added over here in the sidebar. I will talk about discount. For instance, if I say $10 and I apply the coupon, I get a discount of $10. I will show you all the different variations of coupon codes. You can also do it based on percentage or only for a certain product or exclude products. I will show you all that in this tutorial. We will take a look at shipping, shipping based on the price. Shipping based on the total amount of weight and shipping based on your address. I will talk about taxes, taxes in California, taxes in different states, how to apply taxes to certain states, how to work with reduced taxes rates and with zero rates. And of course, we'll take a look into payment methods, paying with PayPal, paying with credit card, how to configure your PayPal account so you can receive payments. So I did my best to give you all the information I know. If you like what you're seeing so far, please give this video a thumbs up. I would appreciate it and good luck with making your beautiful, amazing website. There are a few things you need in order to get a website. You need a domain name, you need web hosting, you need WordPress, and you need a theme. A domain costs around $12 per year. Web hosting costs around eight, $9 per month. I can give you some discount on web hosting. WordPress is free. The theme costs around $60. And this instruction video is totally free. The first two things we need are a domain name and web hosting. A domain name is basically a URL over here. It's an address for your website, something like facebook.com or apple.com or google.com. If you type that in, it will direct you to your website. What is web hosting? Web hosting is a very fast computer that's online 24 seven that stores your complete website. So with a domain name and web hosting, you can create your own website. In order to do that, let's go to hostgatordc.com. 
and here we get our web hosting. I've been using HostGator for quite a while and I really like the support. They're always available. You can chat with them or you can call them. And if there's a problem, they're able to help you. I never had any big problem with HostGator, so I host all my websites over here. If you want to get web hosting, click here on web hosting. And as you see, there are three plans. This one, you can forget the business plan. It's not what we need. We will choose between the hatchling plan and the baby plan. The hatchling plan is if you want to have one website only and the baby plan is for people that want more than one domain. So as you see, this is a single domain and this is unlimited domains. So if you're starting with one website then choose the hatchling plan, and if you want to start with multiple websites, then choose the baby plan. You can always upgrade later. So I start with the hatchling plan. So I say sign up now and then we have to choose our domain name. You can enter your domain name. If I say I want to have Facebook, I click on enter. It says facebook.com is not available. So you need to find a domain name that's available. In my case, I will try Enfold. That's the theme we are working with. 2017, I press enter and it's still available. HostGator gives me some different options, but I don't need that. I only want the .com. After .com, the .net, and the .org are the best ones, but I always stick with the .com version. I scroll down. I don't want to have domain privacy protection. I can edit and then people can see who I am, but I want people to know who I am, so I don't use it. And I scroll down. We just chose the hatchling plan and here we have the billing cycle. The longer the billing cycle, the more discount you get. I like to choose for three or six months. Then you get some nice discount and then you're not stuck if you don't want to get along with your website. Let's say three months right now. My username will be enfold2017. My security pin will be one, two, three, four, five. You need it if you have any questions. At the customer support, you need this code. And here we need to enter some billing information. So my email address, enfold2017 at wordpressking.com. And it's important that you use the right email address. You need to have access to this email address because HostGator will send some important information to this email address, enfold2017. So I will fill in this information. And here we can choose our payment type. I like to pay with credit card, so I fill in my details over here. And my account use is business. I scroll down, and here are some additional services. I don't use these because you can always Add this through WordPress and it will be free. So I don't need this. And then you see it's $45.80, but I have a special coupon code for you. It's WordPress King 25. And if you validate it, make sure this one is unchecked again, and then it will be $37.59. Maybe you will get even more discount. And when you use this coupon code, I get a commission that helps me to make all these tutorials. You will not pay more, but I will get a commission. So thank you for that. It supports my channel very much. And then here you have to agree to everything. So I do that and I say, check out now. And here we are. Get ready. We're setting up your account. So I will go to my email address. And here you see, thank you for choosing HostGator. And this email is very important. My account information, I click here. And here I have access to my control panel. So I click on this link and then I can log in. So I have to get my username, Enfold 2017 and my generated password, copy, paste. And I can log in over here. I close this pop-up and over here there are popper links and I want to use the WordPress installer. You also can find it at Essentials, WordPress installer. I click here and I select my domain over here. In my case, enfold2017.com. If I want to, I can install it at enfold2017.com forward slash new or something I type here, but I want to install it at the root. So I click on next before I do here. You can see 
you can let people do it for you and it can cost $400 or $100, but I will show you how you can do it for free. It's not necessary to do this. So I click on next and here's the blog title. In my case, it's Ferdy Corpusuk Media. I have a media company where I make photos, films, and websites, and I want to make a website about that. My username will be this one, my first name, my last name, and my email address. I scroll down, I agree to the terms of service, and I install it now. Installing WordPress, so we have to wait for a minute. The installation is complete, but if I go to this link over here, it can be that your website will not be active yet because you just ordered your website. It can take up till 20 minutes, maybe one or two hours before your website gets active. And right now mine is, so I click on admin login and here I am. And then I can use these settings, my username, I copy it and I paste it and my password. I copy it and I paste it and I say login. And here I am at the back end of my website. And if I hold command and click over here, then I go to the front page of our website. Everybody in the world that visits nfold2017.com at this moment will see this website. I will close the C panel and my hostgator billing tab. And I go back to the dashboard. What I want to do, I want to clean it up and I want to change a few things. The first thing I want to do, I want to go to users, click on myself, scroll down, and I want to add a first name and a last name. First name, last name, and then I can choose display name publicity as Freddy Corp over here or Ferdy Korpsuk. I prefer my whole name, so I choose Ferdy Korpsuk and I can change a new password over here. So I choose a new password. I have to confirm the use of a weak password and I say update profile. Now if I log out and I log in, I can use my own password I know by heart. I say remember me and I log in. So I want to clean this up. How can I do that? I go to plugins and I want to delete a few plugins. I close this one. I close this one. I don't like this. No thanks. And I want to do a bulk action, which means I select all the plugins except for this one. And I click on deactivate, apply. All the plugins are deactivated right now and now I select them all again except for Akismet, delete and apply. Yes. Now they are deleted one by one. Now I go and update WordPress to the most recent update. So I click over here, please update now. Update now. And update the WordPress database. Continue. And here it is. Here I see that there are still two updates I can do. So I click on those. And there are theme updates. I don't need that. So I go to appearance, themes. And since we're not using these themes, I click on theme details. And I delete this one. Everything I don't need, I want to delete because it takes space. It can make your WordPress website slower and I want to keep it organized. So also this one, theme details, delete. Okay. If I click here now, you see there are no more updates. I go back to the dashboard and I want to dismiss some things and make it a little bit more organized. And I close this one, this one, and this one. We have one post, one comment, and one page. So if I go to the front page, I refresh it. And we can go to a blog post. It's called Hello World. If I click here, 
you will see and fall 2017.com forward slash index and a date. I don't like this. So what will I do? I will go to the dashboard. I go to settings and permalinks. I want my whole website to be clean. So I rather have nfold 2017com slash hello world. So I go back to permalink settings and I click here on post name. I save the changes. Permalink structure updated. I go back to the front page. I click here to go to nfold2017.com. And if I click on hello world, you'll see the link structure is now nfold2017.com slash hello world. It's more organized and it's better for Google. What's next? I go to dashboard and I'm going to delete the post and the page. And if I delete the post, the comment will also be automatically deleted. I open them in a new tab, pressing command and clicking like this. And I click here on trash. So hello world goes to trash. Then I click on trash and I can delete it permanently or empty the trash. Also at pages, I click on trash. Again, I go to the trash. I can delete it permanently or empty the trash. If I have more pages over here, I want to delete them. Then I click on empty the trash. So if I go back to my dashboard, I close these steps. You see, it's really clean. So this is our WordPress website, and now we are going to create a few pages. You can hover over here and go to page, or you can go to pages and create a new one. I click here on add new. And the first page I want to create is the home page. So I click here home. This is the title of the page and I say publish. That's all I do for now. Now it's published and I click on add new. The second one is about, I want people to know who I am or who my company is, what my company is doing, a little bit of background information about my company. So an about page, I publish it. I want to offer my services. So I create a page which is called services. And I have three major services in my business. The first one will be a page also is photography. The second one is film or videos. I add a new one, film. And the third one is web design, web design, publish. I want to showcase my projects. So I, I want to create a new page which is a portfolio. I want to keep people up to date with news and stuff. So I create a new page, which is called the blog page. Publish and the latest one at new is a contact page. So people can get in contact with me, publish. If I go to the website in the new tab, you see those pages nowhere. I go to edit page and I go to appearance menus. And here we can make a menu. We have to create one. So my menu name will be main underscore menu. Create menu. And I want to select everything, all the pages over here and add them to the menu by clicking this button. If I save it, and I refresh the page, you still will see no menu. We have to assign the menu. So I scroll down and here the display location of this menu will be the primary menu. I can also select social links menu. And if I save the menu, and I refresh the page, you'll see the menu over here. And you will see it over here. I don't like this at all. That was just to show you what is possible. I save the menu and actually I want to change the order. I want a contact page 
to be at the right. So I'm going to change the order of the menu in the back end. Over here is really easy. I can drag it holding with my mouse over here. The home goes over here. About is the second page. The third one is services. And what I can do, I can make sub menu items. So I have over here photography. I can drag it over here like this film, web design, portfolio, and blog and contact. I save the menu and then it looks like this. Or I can make a sub menu. It's very easy. I drag photography a little bit to the right. Right now, it will be a sub item of services. The same goes for film. I drag it to the right and you see a tab like this. I release it and then it will be a sub item of services. And I could even make a sub item in films like this. If I save it, I refresh the page. You will see services and film as a sub item, which is called web design. That's how you can navigate through the menu. But this is not a sub item of film. So I drag it back. And if you take a look at apple.com, you see they have the logo. And if I click on Mac and I want to go back to the home page, then I click on the logo and I'm back at the home page. So I don't use the home page. So I don't need it. Remove it, save the menu, refresh the page. And if I'm at the about page and I click on further corpse hook, I will be at the home page. So this is what I like. But if you take a look at apple.com, they spent millions of dollars to optimize their website so that people will buy more. And this looks like crap in my opinion in comparison with this website. So I take a look at websites of big companies and see how they do it and that's how I want to do it. So in order to do that, I'm going to change my theme to premium theme. And in order to get that premium theme, go to wordpressking.com. Go to themes and scroll down and here you see the Enfold theme. I click on the image and I want to see more details. So I click over here. The theme costs $60 and let's take a look at the live preview. I can choose a demo. So for instance, the default demo, I hold command and click and let's choose some different demos. And here you can see how it looks like. You see a logo over here, a nice clean menu, a really beautiful slider. And you see the way Enfold show things is really beautiful. Here it's animating. It's, it's really nice, nice light box. Uh, I'm a web designer myself and I make websites and 90% of the cases I use the Enfold theme to make websites for my customers. It's so intuitive. It's really beautiful. It's really optimized for Google. So let's take a look at a different example. You can watch a promo video like this. And the nice thing about this theme is you can install all these websites as demo content and then you can adjust it to your needs and wishes. Look at this. For instance, this website, I know a customer, it's called wecloudit.nl. If I drag it like this, Let's take a look at this website, a logo, menu, nice text, and you can watch a video. And if I take a look over here, a logo, the menu, the text, and the video. If I scroll down, you see something like this. If I scroll down over here, you see something like this. So you see, it's really nice what you can do with this theme. If I take a look at another demo, you see, you can show your blog post a really nice way. For a restaurant, it's really nice. There are so many options with this theme. I love this theme. That's the reason why I show you how to work with this theme. I think it's the best theme out there. Not only the front end, but also in the back end. I really love this theme. 
So in order to get this theme, you can buy it over here at Theme Forest, buy the theme, and go to the checkout. My first name will be Ferdy, my second name will be Corpus Hook, and fold 2017 at wordpressking.com. And I go to the next. My username will be nfold2017 and my password will be this one. I have to say that I'm not a robot. I don't want to sign up. I agree. Create account and continue. My company name, Ferdy Corpusuk. My UVAT identification number and save and continue. If you don't have this one, the price will go up a little bit. I have one. It's $60 and I want to pay with PayPal. I check out with PayPal. I have to fill in my details over here. And I say login, pay now. I need to confirm this before I can download it. So I go to my email. And here, confirm your email to complete your purchase. And I will do that. Confirm your email. And what I can do, I can go to download. And I want to download only the installable WordPress file only. I click over here. If you don't find this page, then go. For instance, if you are here, then go to Enfold or your username to downloads. I click here on download and then click on installable WordPress file only. It's downloading right now. So what I will do now, I will go back to my website. I will remove the email tab. Also this tab. I go to appearance, themes, and I add a new one. You can find quite some free themes over here. I want to use a premium theme, the Enfold theme, upload the theme, and I choose a file. I go to my downloads. And here it is. It's almost 70 megabytes. I open it and I install it now. And this can take a minute. If you use Chrome, you see left at the bottom how long it's taking to upload. It's at 40% right now. So I have to be patient for a while. So the install is complete. I have to activate the theme. And when it's activated, I go directly to the Enfold tab over here to the theme options. Before we go and work on the theme options, I want to go to appearance, themes, and I want to go to theme details of the 2016 theme and delete it. So right now we have the newest WordPress with the newest Enfold version. And if I take a look in the new tab, you see this is our website right now. It's not looking perfect yet, but the beginning is here and now we are going to configure our website. Before we do that, you can download a package with all the images I will use in my tutorial if you want to follow along with my images. You can also use your own images and logo, that's fine. The choice is up to you. In order to do that, go to wordpressking.com, go to tutorials, and fall 2017 tutorial, and scroll down and click here at download the images I use in the tutorial. You can use these images. You can also use your own. If you want something to start with, then click over here. I click here. It's going to download and I go back to our website. One thing I want to do, if I go to the front end, you see nothing is found. Sorry, no post match your criteria. When WordPress started, it was a blog website. So that's the reason why the homepage starts with blog posts, but we don't have blog posts right now. And instead of showing the blog post at my first homepage, I want to have a homepage without blog posts. So in order to do it, let's go to the settings over here, settings. Let's go to general and walk through these settings. My site title is Ferdy Korpshoek. I want to change it to media. The tagline can be you deserve it to be seen. You don't see this anywhere in the website. I scroll down. You can select the date format. 
I want to keep it like this. And this one I want to change to is time structure. My week starts on Monday. Site language is English. You can change it over here and I save it. Then we can go to reading. I don't do anything at writing. And here it says front page display your latest posts or aesthetic page. In this case, I want the static page, the home page, and the post page is the blog page. If you want to, you can discourage search engines from indexing the site, but we want to be found in Google, so I don't check this on. I save the changes. I go to media, and here it says organize my uploads into month and year basis folders. I don't want that, I want them all to be in one folder. So I uncheck this. It's my personal preference. I save the changes and permalinks we had already. So now if I refresh the page, you will be at the home page. You are here at home. This is our home page we just created, only without any content. I unpack all the files I downloaded. Here they are. I will drag them to the desktop. And here you can see the settings. My logo, and the about me page, what I will use. So you can follow along. A lot of pictures are from Unsplash and Pexels. Those are free image websites. You can use them without giving credit. So that's really nice. And here you have all the things you need in order to make exactly the same website I am going to make. So I close this tab and I go to the back end over here to Enfold. And here again, it says the front page settings. And I think these settings overwrite the settings over here. So if I would say film is the main page and I save all the changes and I refresh this page, you see now film is the home page, but I leave those always the same. Uh, home page is my front page. And where do I want to display my blog? Over here, my logo. You can upload a logo for the best results in header, or you can change the header settings. I upload my logo, and if I click there, I can select a file. What I can also do, I can go to Finder, Enfold, Settings, and I can drag it over here, my logo, like this, or I go back over here, I can select the files. So I go here and I select the white logo and I upload it. I click over here and I say use image as logo. You see a small icon over here from HostGator. You can replace it with your own and they have to be square. So the, the aspect ratio needs to be square one by one or 50 by 50 or 100 by 100. I upload mine, upload files, select a file and here it says it's 62 by 62 pixels. I use this one. You can have a page preloading icon and you can choose a custom logo. I don't use it. My pages load very quick, so no need for that. A light box, it's really nice. I leave that checked. I don't do anything with this. And this I leave as it is. I save the changes. And if I refresh the page, you see, my logo over here. If I scroll down, you see the menu is sticky. We are going to walk through these settings later. So let's go to the general layout. We can have a stretch layout like now if I press command minus minus minus. You see those lines, they are stretching to the whole wide of the website, no matter which size. If I change this, command zero, I could say I want box layout. So I save the changes and then you will see if I make it smaller, we have a box and this is the background. If we have done that, then we can go to the second tab and we could say, I want this site to be 800 pixels wide. What you'll see then, you can increase or decrease the size of your website, the wide. And then if you change it to stretch layout again you'll still have this size like this 
but your website will be stretched. I want the container width to be something like 1120. Save the changes. Refresh. Often I take a look at other websites, for instance, apple.com. It's over here. Control tab. You see it's around the same size, so I like that. I go back over here. Then here we have the content sidebar ratio, uh, 73% is this area and 27% is this area. I leave it as this, you can change it. And then I go to general styling. And here we can change the look and feel of our website. So for instance, I could say I want it to be splash red. I save all the changes and this is how it looks. You see not much change, only this thing is red. But if I would say modern black, you can see this is how it's going to look. So I save all the changes, I refresh the page and now all of a sudden we have a dark page. So totally different. With a few clicks you can change the look and feel of your website. So you can take a look at a few settings and immediately you will see the result over here. I choose splash blue and I save all the changes. I refresh the page. You see our icon over here. We just uploaded. It's looking nice. I see the color is blue over here and if I hover over it, it's a little bit lighter, but I want this color to be the color of my logo. I have a tool, it's the color pick eyedropper. If I click over here, I hover and I click and now I can copy this color code. And if I go to the back end, I scroll down, I can change these colors. I paste it, I copy this whole color code and everywhere the blue appears, I will replace it with the color of the logo. And right here, it's a little bit lighter, so I paste it and I click on the color and then here I change the brightness to 255. So it's a little bit lighter as you see. The same goes over here for this step. Again, I paste it, I paste it and I change this to 255. In the footer, the same, there's no blue color. And here we can change the font size. I like Open Sans, the default content font size. I want it to be a little bit bigger so people can read it better. I change it to 14. Now I can save all the changes. I refresh it. And now you see this has a blue color. Now I go to Advanced Styling. You see there are some headers over here, recent comments, archives, categories. We can change these styles on the whole page or individually. How can we do that? I go to the back end to advanced styling and I can select an element over here to customize. I know these are H3 titles. So if I want to change them, I go to the headings H3 and I say by clicking edit element and now I can change the style of all the H3 titles in the website. So for instance, I could say the font color will be this one and it needs to be really big, 40, and then I can save all the changes. And if I refresh the page, you see it's way too big and also here. But what if I want to change only the titles in the sidebar over here? Then I can make it smaller, of course, something like 16. And I could say apply to section main content. So I leave this as it is and I save all the changes. So that means that this will not be changed, but only over here in the main content. This is still blue, a little bit smaller, and this is gray again. What I can do now, I can go back again, select again, element H3, edit element, and only for the footer and the socket, and I can change this color to red for instance and I save all the changes, refresh the page. Now here at the right, it should be blue and here it's red. In that way you can change a lot of things in the website without touching the code. And if you want to delete it, you can delete it over here. 
I want to leave the size to default. I like the color, so I leave it and I want to change it everywhere in the website. Save all the changes. We also can adjust the menu, but before I do that, let's take a look. I want to implement the menu we already made. So I go over here, click on menus, close this tab and close this tab. Here we have our main menu and it's not applied yet to our website. So here at display location, I say enfold main menu. You know what? Also the footer menu. It won't have any drop downs, but the main menu will have. So I say save menu, open in a new tab. And now you will see our menu like this. I scroll down. And here it is also. It's looking really nice. And actually, I want to make the font a little bit bigger and create a nice hover. So I go to menus, to enfold. to advanced styling and I say main menu links, edit element, the font color, it can be this color. So I grab this again, I click over here and I see this is the code of my logo and I paste it over here like this. It can be a little bit bigger, maybe. 22, let's see what happens. It's too big in my opinion. So what I will do, I will make it smaller, 16, save it. I will go to menus and change everything into capitals. I can do it like this. There's also another way, but this way, is also a possibility, services. I click over here, the latest one, contact. Save it, refresh it. I like this, maybe a little bit smaller. Again, I go to Enfold, Advanced Styling, make it 15 and save it. Now I select the links again, main menu links, edit element. And now I say apply to mouse hover state. I copy this color. I paste it over here. I save it. And now if you hover, you only see here below a blue line. But if I refresh the page, you see it's also getting blue. I click over here. And you'll see this blue line will stay here. So you see wherever you are in the website, I am at the services page. There's still too much space over here. So I'm going to decrease it. So go to the settings again. And now go to the header settings. Here you see what will happen when we change a few things. I can change the position of the menu and the logo. I could say the logo must be in the center, the menu below, like this. But you can also see over here what's happening. So if I change it, I would say the menu needs to be left and the logo right. You see immediately what the result will be. I like it as it is, logo left, menu right. Display of menu items as text or as an icon, like this. You can add a separator. Like this, between every link, there will be a separator. And we can remove all these lines over here. I leave them as they are. Then you see here a title and where you are in the website, you can change that. You can hide it both. And if you save it, it will look something like this. No header anymore with home and where you are. I leave it as it is, but you can change it anywhere but you can also change it on individual pages and blog posts. So I show them both. Over here, the header size right now is slim. I could make it slimmer, custom pixel value. And then I could say, make it uh, something like this. And it will appear to be quite large like this. 
but I want to make it small. If I go to my logo, I see the height is 62. So I want to change it to 62. Let's see what happens. It's now 62, but now it can't shrink. Let's make it 82. Now it can shrink. I should make my logo a little bit bigger. Then if I go down, it looks perfect. And now it doesn't look perfect. But for now, I leave it as it is. And if I go to Enfold, to Header Behavior, you can say this header should not be sticky or should not be shrinking. And then if you scroll down, the menu stays on top. If you want it to be sticky, you can select it over here and make it shrinking. You can let the logo in the menu adapt to the left and the right of your website. So if I check this and I refresh the page and I press command minus, you'll see no matter how big the website is, the logo will be at the left and the menu at the right. I don't like that option, so I uncheck it. I go to extra elements, a search icon. I don't use it, so I check it off and we can have a top bar above the menu. So I could show social icons, a secondary menu. I don't have one, so I don't use it. Or I could have some extra information at the right. Welcome. My phone number, something like that. Save it, refresh, and now we have a top bar some social media icons and welcome and our phone number. If we scroll down, it will still be here. If I go back to header behavior, I can unstick the top bar. So if we refresh the page, the top bar is over here. And if I scroll down, it will be gone. Let's take a look at the social icons over here. Go to extra elements and click on social profiles. You can also find them over here. We have Twitter, Ferdy Corp. I don't use Dribble. I use Facebook. Click on the plus to add more. Instagram, and you can fill in your own URL. I leave it as this for now, LinkedIn. What else? Google Plus. YouTube. Maybe one more. My email address. If we save all the changes and we refresh the page, you see it looks like this. Really nice. And if I scroll down, it's gone. I don't use it, you can use it. I go back to the header settings, to the extra elements, and I say no social icons and no phone number, extra information. And in that way, the top bar will be gone. Let's continue. Transparency options. This is very interesting. We already uploaded our logo. If you upload the same logo, but then in white over here, you almost don't see it and use the image as logo. Then later in the tutorial, I will show you what you can do with this. And I change this also to white. You can have a picture over the whole website and then your logo will be transparent. It will be a white logo with a white text over here, but we'll take a look at that later. I save all the changes and go to the sidebar settings. On our archive page, do we want to have a sidebar? Yes, at the right side. On our blog page, I want to have a sidebar. On our single post entries also, that means that when somebody's reading a blog, they can go to the sidebar, see other posts, see our Facebook profile or some other stuff. So I like that. Uh, but on pages, I don't like it. So on our homepage, for instance, I don't need a sidebar. And again, if you have the contact page and that's the only page you want to have a sidebar, then you can configure that individually. But for all the other pages, I don't need a sidebar on a page. So I say no sidebar. Sidebar on smartphones, no. Page sidebar navigation, yes, that's okay with me. And again, here's a border. 
So if I say no border, this border will be gone. I would say with border. Save all changes. And now if I refresh it, it's gone. No more sidebar. The footer. That's this dark area over here. We can have widgets over here, which is like uh, the latest news or latest pictures, latest portfolio, a Facebook like box, an email opt-in. There are all kinds of things you can add over here. Right now, I don't use it. We will use it in this tutorial. But for now, I can say only display the socket. That's this thing here below. Here we have our menu. But this I will use later. I will leave it as it is for now. Later in the video, we'll take a look at it. And here we can take a look at it right now. So I go to the back end. In the copyright area, over here we can change. So I would say Alt G 2017 30 Corpus Hook Media. And I can show the social icons right below like this. So I have a menu, social icons, and over here, 30 Corpus Hook Media. Over here it says Enfold theme by Creasy. I want to remove that. It's very easy. Over here, parentheses, no link. Closing, save the changes, refresh, now it's gone. I don't want this menu over here, so I go over here to menus, and then we can uh, deselect it over here, or I go to manage locations, and then we can at every menu select a certain menu, and I don't want it here in the footer, so I save the changes. Go to our home page and it's looking quite clean. As you see, the logo is bigger now. What I did, we made the height of this header 82 pixels. So I created a logo that is the height of 82 pixels with 10 pixels margin above and below. So the logo itself is 62 pixels high and then 10 pixels and 10 pixels. So now it's perfectly fitting. And if I scroll down, you see it's shrinking so i like it and now we can continue with the logo that is fitting so i go back to the back end to the enfold settings and we can go to block layout but i will show you a better way to use your block layout so i will skip this for now social profiles we had already newsletter is for when you have mailchimp i will make a tutorial about this and here are the google services if you have a Google Analytics, then you can paste the code over here. I will paste my Google Analytics tracking code here. And if you want to follow a tutorial about getting Google Analytics on your website, then click here. We can use Google Maps. You need to register an API key. If you want to do that, click over here. I save the changes. And demo import. Uh, you can install all these demos. But we are building the website from scratch. You can export your settings, you can upload your settings, you can take a look if you have a theme update. Then I could say Enfold 2017 as a username. And then I can go to Theme Forest. Take a look here at my API key. I copy it and I can paste it over here. And then the theme will be updated automatically. So if we take a look at our website, this is how it looks like. Logo, nice clean menu, the title where we are in the website, some widgets we have to fill in yet. This is looking clean. I like to work from the right to the left. So let's start with our contact page. What I want to create on this page is a contact form and some information about our business. In order to do that, Let's go to edit this page by clicking over here. Here we can type some text and if we update it and we take a look at the page, you'll see the text appearing over here. If you want to have more options over here, then click on this icon, the toolbar toggle, and here you have more options. I can make this text bold. I can give it a color. I can even make this a header 
And if we update it, you will see it appearing like this. Later, I'm going to talk more about all the options over here. For now, I want to make use of the advanced layout editor. That's the editor of the Enfold theme. I love this editor. This is the reason why I am such a huge fan of this theme. There are three parts. The first part is the layout. Will it be one part or three parts or five or two fifth or three fifth? Then we have the content elements, the text, show team member, a nice table, all kinds of ways to show the information on your website. And then we have the media elements, images, galleries, videos, sliders. And those three parts work really nice together. So I start with a one-on-one -on -one layout element. And what I can do, I go to content elements and I want to have a text block. I drag it over here. And then here I can type text again. So if I save it, I update it and I check it, you'll see, click here to add your own text. What we are going to do, I go to plugins and say, add a new plugin. I'm going to install the contact form plugin, a really nice plugin that helps you to create a contact form on your website. So I say contact form seven, press enter. And here it is contact form seven, over 1 million active installs. And I'm going to insert now by clicking here. Activate it. So over here you see contact appearing. I click there, I dismiss this, and here we have our contact form. If I click over here, you see this is our contact form. You can make this really big and add more options. And over here I will show you a tutorial where I show you everything I know about the contact form. So I leave it as this, I go to mail. If somebody sends you a message, it will be sent to this address. So right now I can copy this code over here. I copy it, I go to contact, edit the page. Click over here and paste this code. Save it, update it. Remove this one and take a look. And now here we have our contact form. So if I fill this in, I will get an email in my email box. And you see, we have a one-on-one -on -one element and it's spreading over the whole page. If I don't want to spread this over the whole page, but only the half, then I can decrease it over here like this, update it, refresh. And then it's only half the page. For this page, I want to make use of a sidebar. And then I can go over here to the layout. I have to scroll down a little bit. And I want to select a sidebar, a right sidebar. And I can select a default sidebar. I have to create one for this page. I say update and let's see what happens or what does not happen. Right now we see a right sidebar. If I change this back to a one-on-one, -on -one, full white, and I update it, you see this is the full white now. That's great. If I use a color section, it could be different. A color section has more options. You can change the background, for instance. So if I change the background to this ugly color, maybe you like the color, but for this website, I don't like it. And I drag the contact form over here. And I update it. Then you see it's overwriting the sidebar. The sidebar comes here below. So maybe you have a contact page or you have a page and you want to have a full white place and below that you want to have the sidebar. And then you'll use the color section. I think I explained a little bit too much in the last five minutes. Maybe I should take it a little bit slower, but along the video, I will show you again and again how things work. So I drag this outside of the color section and I bring it back in the 101. So here we have the contact form and here we have the widget area. It's the same area as over here and we can install widgets over here. I refresh the page, we have the contact form and here I want to add some information about our company. How do I do that? I go to the backend to appearance. 
widgets. We have to make a widget area and assign it to the contact page. So I say contact at widget area. And here it is. I want to add a simple text widget to this area. So I could drag it like this. Or I can click on it, scroll to contact and add the widget. You can have more widgets below each other. Now I have two, one I dragged and one I clicked. I, I delete one. And here's the second one. And here I say Ferdy Corpsuk Media. And then we can create our content. And this is not a visual editor, but it's a code editor. So if I would say line one, line two, line three, and I save it, I go to the back end of this page and I scroll down and we have the sidebar at the right and the sidebar I want to choose is contact and I save it and I go back to view the page and you see line one, line two and line three are all after each other. So I have to add some code. I can do this with a break like this, but I can also do it a different way. I will show you. So if I save it now, this means break the rule or the line. So now every line should be below each other like this. What I want to do, I want to edit the page and go to the text editor. So I click over here. Make sure you're in the visual editor and then I will add some information that I want to paste in the widget. So my address is this one. I say shift enter for a new rule. Postal code. Now I say enter. That means I will make a new alinea. And I like to say E of email. P of phone number and shift enter over here, the W of website. And if I go to the text over here, then I see the code. I see no enters yet. I have to make them manually, but I can edit some stuff. I want to make this big. So I select it and say command B or click over here. And I want to give this a color. Again, I want to give it the same color as in the unfold settings. So I go to the unfold settings, advanced styling, I copy this code, go to text color, custom, paste it over here, remove this one, say, okay, same goes here, make it bold, click on this color, make it bold, click on this color, and here I want to make a link, a mill to link. So I click on this icon, insert link. It automatically sees it's an email address. So it says mill to. And over here, I say make a link. I can click on the link options and open it in a new tab. So I go to the text and right now you'll see here the code. I copy this or I cut it, save it, paste it over here. And then here I need to have two times the break and one time closing of a paragraph and here the opening of a paragraph. And if I save it now and I take a look at the page, you see Ferdy Corps Media, my address. Uh, my address is a little bit too long and something is still going wrong over here. So let me see. I still have to put a break after the dates. It's a little bit hard. I have to do it before the span. Twice. Save it. Refresh it. And now it's working. And I don't like this, it's too long. So maybe I should just do info. And also here, 
info. Save it. And now it's looking like this. If I click here, it opens in a new tab. That's what I wanted. So that's our first widget. You see a few other widgets over here. I don't like that. So I go to the widgets again. I close this. And here it says displayed everywhere. Uh, what I want to do is add a Facebook widget. And remove everything else. So a Facebook light box displayed everywhere. Add to widget. And I could say like us on Facebook. Facebook slash W King come. Save it. Refresh the page. And here it is. People can get in contact with us. They see some information about our company and they can see our Facebook. I want to change one more thing. Click over here. Press enter and say save, update, view the page. And what will you see? Contact. We are here at home slash contact. People can get in contact with us, leave a message. Here's some information about my company, a Facebook like box. And that's how the contact page is made. So we go to the blog page and we are going to create our first blog post. This is a page where we can find an overview of our blog post, but we have no post yet. So if you want to create your first post, you can do that over here. Click on new post. I'm going to walk you through the process of creating a blog post. I'm going to make a blog post about 2016. And I will say 2016 was a great year. And I want to make use of the advanced layout editor. So I click there. And the first thing I want to do here is a category. It's called uncategorized. I want to create a new category. I call this one blog. You see nfall2017.com forward slash 2016 was a great year. I go to the content elements and the text block and I'm going to type some text. I start with this text. I press enter and you see there's some space skipping over here because if you press enter, you open a new Alinea. So I will type my text over here, Alinea 1. Okay, I have my first Alinea over here. I press enter and by pressing enter, I create a new Alinea and I type a new title. And I press enter again and I type a new Alinea. Okay, please don't look at the text. It's just a, a dummy text. And if I save this and I publish it and I go to our blog page over here, this is what you will see. 2016 was a great year. Read more. It is December the 22nd, 2016. Zero comments in blog by Ferdy Korpsuk. No picture. I can read more. If I read more, this is what you will see. Actually, there are four alineas. The first one, second one, third one, and the fourth one. And I want to style this a little bit more. So I go to edit the post. I drag this to the left. And I click here to the text on the text block. And what I can do, I can select this and I say, make it a heading one. If I do that, it will become a header. But what can happen if I have a title over here, for instance, I have this text over here and I say shift enter. And I select this and I want to make this header one. And then everything will be a header one because it's the same Alinea. So in order to get a new Alinea, you need to press enter and no shift enter. But if you want to start a new rule, then press shift enter and it will still be the same Alinea, but you have a new line. So also this one, I can make it a header one. 
header one titles are found better in Google. So if there's a certain word you want to be found on in Google or a term, then you can use it in the title. Now, if I save this, it will look like this. If the title is too big, then you could go to the back end of the website in a new tab, go to Enfold, Advanced Styling, go to Header 1, edit the element and change it to, let's see, 16 pixels. Save it. Now if I refresh it, yes. And I want to make them blue again. It's up to you what you would do with it. I make it blue. Save it. Refresh it. So it looks like this. I go to the post again. And maybe I want to highlight a word. So for instance, business films. I can select it. Click on the bold icon. Give it a certain color. Color I just copied. I can select website, make it a link. And if I click on link options, I can search for a different page. For instance, a web design. I can let it open in a new tab or in the same window. And if I save it, update it and check it, you'll see the link color will be blue automatically. If I click on it, I go to the page web design. Maybe I want the second linear to appear different. I go back to the post. I click here and I could select the whole alinea and say this alinea, I want to align right like this. And it will be aligned to the right. I can make a quote, most important thing is that we do what makes us happy. New Alinea, I can select this, make it a quote. I save it, update it. Let's take a look. It looks like this. So there are quite a few things you can do over here. But what we also can do, I will bring it back to the left. I cut this phrase, this quote, and I save it. And maybe I want to have a quote, then I go over here and I search for special heading. I click on it. Now I can have a nice quote. I paste the text, I make it a header one. And I want it to be in the center and now I can change the size. So I want it to be quite big. Colors, I can change the color. So for instance, make it red. And let's see what happens. Now it's looking like this. I can click on it again make it a bit smaller. I change the color to the blue color. And let's do something else. I go to layout elements. And if I want to scroll down and still see all the elements, I can click over here. This is what I like about the Enfold theme. And now it's on the whole page. So if I scroll down, it will still be with us. So I can say, I can drag this over here and this over here and this over here. I go to content elements and I go for animated numbers. So I scroll down and I drag it over here and I click over here. The number can be in my case 27 and here I can say video or film projects. We can add an icon. This one, uh, the size of the number can be quite big, I think 60. Description, maybe 25. 
and we can add a link to a page, for instance, the film page. Open a new window, no. Let's update it and let's see what happens. And it will count the amount of film projects of the last year. I would like to change the color. So I scroll down again, click over here, go to colors, make it a custom color. And again, this one, save it just to illustrate. Now I can delete those two areas and I can duplicate this. And here I say 14 websites, different icon. Let's see. And again, 42 photography projects. Let's grab this one. And of course we have to change the link here to photography and over here to web design. So there's more than only styling text. If you want to in a blog post, you also can make something like this. What I can do also here in the text, I can insert a photo. If I place my mouse over here, I can add media, select files, go to blog, honeymoon, and I search for a photo of me and Anna. I could go for this one, open it, insert it into the post. Now there comes this photo into the post. And what I can do, I can align it to the right. So it will be aligned like this. And if I save it and update it, it looks like this. Quite nice. We can do much more with that. I click here again. I click on the photo. I can align it to the left or in the middle somewhere. I bring it back to the right and now I click on this icon to edit it and I want to edit the original. Maybe I want to crop over here like this. I can crop it over here. I can save it and I can update it and now you see us better. So this is what you can do with adding photos. You can add a photo, a different one over here. The second Alinea, add image. Find a photo. Later I will show you how to optimize it for Google. For now I'll just import it here at the left. You can link it to a file or to a URL. Change the size, I want it to be medium. Insert it and it will be over here. Save it, update it, let's see what happens. So I've shown you how to create a text with Alinea's, how to edit the text, the colors, how to add links, how to add images, how to add different elements. I don't like this, but it was just to illustrate what is possible. So if I want to have more space over here, I can go to separators over here. Click on this icon to edit it and say custom separator, no border. I just want to have a margin of 30 pixels, no icon. Oh, it has also 30 pixels in the bottom. Now you see there's more space over here. Well, there was one blog post. I will show you some more. But that was to illustrate what can happen. But a very important thing, if I go to edit the post again, and I close this over here, and I scroll down here at the right, I see the featured image. Right now, if I go to blog, close this one, I see no picture. I want to have a featured image, so I select it over here, and then I go for this photo, set featured image, and I don't want this picture to display at a single post. So I click on this, so it won't be displayed above the post. 
I update it. I refresh the page. Now you see a picture over here. What I'm still missing is a small text. So I grab this text over here. This one I bring back like this. I select this text, I copy it, I save it over here. Then I go to screen options and I check excerpt. Then I have to scroll down and here I can paste the text that I want to be shown over here. So if I save this, you'll see the text of the first Alinea like this. And if I read more, I see the whole blog post. What I want to do now, I want to add a widget over here. So I go to edit post to appearance widget. And here at the sidebar block, I want to go to unfold latest news. I drag it over here. Recent blog posts. I want to show five of all the categories. Save it. Refresh it. What you will see now is the recent blog posts. 2016 was a great year. The date, the time, and the image. So that's how you can make a blog post. I will show you some more. I go back to blog over here, create a few more blog posts, and then I will show you how you can edit the look and feel of your blog posts. So I will edit the new one, click on post. And I want to make a blog post about Montana Lysiantes. The Netherlands. Again, I choose for the advanced layout editor, a one on one post, and I go for a text block and I start typing. I save it. I want to add a featured image. I upload it. I select the file. You can find it in Envol 2017 block Montana. You click here. I open it in this image I will optimize for Google. How do I do that? I've optimized it by the title, Montana Lysiantes Netherlands. And I remove all the dashes and I copy this title and paste it in the alt text. And that's how you optimize for Google and then set as featured image and don't display this image on a single post. I post it in blog and I can make a subcategory for instance, film projects, and I can select the parent category, which is blog. And I say, add a new category. I publish it. And if I go to the blog, you will see two blog posts like this. And also here, but no read more text. So again, I copy this text, go to the excerpt, paste it. But I want to do something more with it. If I go to this post, Montana Lysiantes, can you see here at the right, the sidebar, but I want to do something different. First, I want to add a video. You can go to the file, desktop, portfolio, films, Montana, click over here. There you will find the Vimeo link. I go to edit the post. I go to media elements and I want to drag a video here below. I click on it and I paste the Vimeo link, save it, update it, view the post. And here it is, the video. It's uh, automatically adjusting to the size of the blog post. And what I want to do with it now here we have the sidebar, but I want to work with a color section. So I drag it here above and what I could do now, I can go to the color section. I can select a background image here at the section background, insert an image. I will use this image I have already. The size will be full size, insert it. And let's see what happens. So let's take a look over here. You see, 
There is an image over the full white of the website and below. The blog post will start in the recent blog post. This is so low because it has no height adjusted to it. Because I did not configure any height. So I go back to edit the post. Go to the settings here. And select a custom height. For instance, 800 pixels. Save it. Update it. And let's see what happens. Now we see this. And below the video starts. You see the picture is not fully white. So let's see what happens there. I guess I just need a larger image. And we can make it a parallax background. We can align the background image position. That comes in really handy when you open this on the iPhone. You can select on which place in the picture does it need to be focused. I think in the center and top. So I say top center, background repeat, um, stretch to fit, or you know what, skill to fit. So it will maintain the aspect ratio and save it and update it. And that way you can configure the color section background. And now you will see that it's looking quite nice. What else can we do? I want to make it a little bit less high. So let's say 500 pixels. Save it. And now in this color section, we can add elements, all the same elements we have. So for instance, a special heading, I drag it over here. And then I can copy this title over here and paste it here. I create a header one. The heading style will be in the center. And then I can change the size to 30. And what will the text be? This will be the heading text. Save it. Update it. And let's see what happens. I don't like the color, so I can change it to something else. You see the white is not completely anymore. Let's see if I can do something with that. But first, I want to remove this bar over here. So I go to edit the post. I scroll down and here at the right, layout. I see title bar settings default. And I want to hide both. Update it and refresh. Now you see the title will be gone. There will be a picture with a title. It's a parallax background. And here the blog post starts. So that's a way to play around with the blog post, how you can do that. Let's see if we can change some more things about the background image. Skill to fit, maybe stretch to fit. Let's see what happens. Yes, that is what I wanted. Only one more thing. I want to change this, of course. The picture is quite light, so I can make the color maybe a dark color, maybe something like 444444. Save it like this. Montana, Lysiantes, the Netherlands. This is the title of a blog post. Here's the video. What else can we do? We can play a video over here. So I go to edit the post. Click here. Grab the link of the video. Copy it. Go to the color section. Section background. Remove the image. And go for a background video. I paste it. I save it. I update it. And I refresh it. And now we will see the video is starting by itself without sound. But that's a nice way to show your blog post title. So that shows you a little bit about all the possibilities there are. I really love this theme. 
I hope you do too. And while we are working on this, let me show you one more thing. I go to edit the post, scroll down, and I want to give this header some transparency. So I would say transparent and a glassy header. And let's refresh this. And what you will see now is that this is the header. You see it's transparent, the logo is white. And if I scroll down, then it becomes visible again. Uh, that's really nice. Uh, at this moment, you see a white logo. And that is what we did in the beginning of the video. If I go to the back end, to the unfold options, to the header, and over here to the transparency options. Here I uploaded exactly the same logo as my normal logo, but now with white colors. You can also change the color to black. I could change this to a black logo, upload files, select files, logo, and save it. So if I would refresh it, what I will do, then everything is black like this. And when I scroll down, it becomes normal. So quite some information about how you can adjust a blog post and the layout of it. I hope you like it. Feel free to be creative with it in your own way. I want to show you one more thing. As you see right now, I don't see the logo. Now I see in the menu when we have a white background like now, then you don't see the text. So what I want to do, I want to make this a little bit more or less transparent. How can you do that? Go to wpking.com or wordpressking.com. Go to tutorials and fall 2017 and scroll down and copy this code over here. I copy it. Then I go to Enfold over here to the settings and I go to general styling. I scroll down and here you have a quick CSS area. Here you can add some quick CSS and if you paste it over here, what you say in this CSS is the top header transparency of this page, of every page that has transparency like this. The background color needs to be 000. That means black. And the transparency is 0 0.6. So if I save this, let's see what happens. Right now, it will look like this. So even though there's a white background, you still see the menu. We can play around with this. So if I say 0.1, and it looks like this. It's very light. If I say 0.9, it's almost 100% black without any background transparency. So you can play around with that. I like 0.6 or maybe 0.4. Like this, you still see the video and you see the menu no matter what background there is. So I'm going to add a few blog posts. Now fast forward and then we will take a look at the blog page. Here I want to show you how I add photos to my website. Uh, there are a lot of ways. I will show a few other ways, but this is my way how I do it. I create a text over here about our honeymoon in this blog post and then I place all the images like this. In this text, I copy to the excerpt. And then I go back here. How I do it, I press enter, new Alinea, I add media. I upload the files, select the files. I go to blog, honeymoon. And I select the first one, hold shift, select the latest one. One of them I already uploaded. So this one I don't upload and I open them. So here they are, they're all selected. I scroll down and I say alignment center, no link, maybe to the media file. 
and size medium. I wonder if it's for all now. Let me see. No. So I deselect them. I select the first one. I scroll down. I say center, link to media file. And I want to have the full size. And there it is. I press shift enter and now with the same settings I can select the rest. So probably they will all be in the center now, link to the media file and then full size. I insert them into the post and here they come. I remove this everywhere. It's an amazing photographer in South Africa, Cape Town. I save it, I publish it. And if I take a look, this is our text. And these are all the photos. If I click on them, I can go to the right and to the left and see all the pictures. So that's how I do it. And now we have five blog posts. So if I click here on refresh, you see we have five different blog posts. Also here, it looks really nice, but the day we got engaged is almost the same day that we went on honeymoon, both December the 22nd of 2016. What we can do, we can click on we are engaged. And I know that was the 26th of October, 2014. So I go over here to published and I click on edit. I select October the 22nd of 2014 and the blog was written probably at six o'clock so i say okay i update it and in that way you can change the publish time of your post so if i go to view the post now it says we are engaged october 22nd 2014 at six o'clock in the evening we can do that to all our blog posts so I just did that and if I refresh, you see 2016, 2015, 2015, 2014. So now they're in the nice order. If I want to publish this the 1st of January, 2017, then I click on the post. I edit the post and I say edit and I select January the 1st, 2017 at 000. Okay, schedule, it says now. So if I go to the website to blog, I don't see it over here, but if I go to the back end, to posts, I see it's scheduled, so it will be there. I will bring it back to right this moment, so I click on edit, and it's 22nd, you know what, make it 21st, 2016 at 8 o'clock in the morning. Publish, now it's back online. That's how you can do that. And if you want to adjust the categories, click on categories over here, and then you can adjust things over here. And if I go to widgets, and I want to select categories over here, in the blog page I can display everything I save it I go to the blog page what you'll see when you make categories especially when you have a lot of blog posts you can select the category film projects and then you see all the blog posts with film projects well it's the only one, but if you click on private, you see all the blocks that are private, we are engaged, we are on honeymoon. And if I say 2016 was a great year, that blog post actually is also a private blog post. Then I can check private, update it, view post. And if I click on private, now you see there are three posts. Also, 2016 was a great year. I want to change the look and feel of our blog page. You can do that.
by going to Enfold and go to the block layout. And here you can change a few things. Let me check. Block styling elegant. Refresh the page. You see a different look and feel now. So here are the categories, the title. If you click on the title, you go to the blog post, the excerpt, the read more text and the date, how many comments and the author and the image, of course. If I go to the block layout, I can select a grid layout, save all changes, refresh. And now we see it looks like this. You see everything in grid form. Or go for a big preview pick. Refresh. I like this a lot. But you can also take it to the next level. We are going to do it, of course. I say use the advanced layout editor to build your own block layout. That's what we want to do. So I save all the changes. I go to block, refresh, see if something happens. And now you see nothing. I'm going to edit the page. And it says you are currently editing the page that shows your latest post. I say advanced layout editor. And I go for a color section. Then I go to media elements. And I go for a featured image slider. I go to layout. I say I want to have a right sidebar with a sidebar block. I update it. Close this one and let's see what happens. This is what I wanted. 2016 was a great year. I can click on it and then I go to the blog post. I go to the right and I can see our three latest blog posts. Let's adjust it a little bit more. I click on it. You can select a category. You can select how many numbers you want to have over here. I want to have only one. I want to show the title and the read more button. And that's okay. I go to content elements and I go for blog posts. I drag them below. So outside of the color section, so it will appear over here and click on it. Display blog posts of all the categories, single author, big preview, an excerpt with a read more link. And this is okay. Post number, I want to have one. Or you know what? Make it two. And here I say, do not allow duplicate posts. So the first post over here will not be also here. No pagination. Always display the element. Save it. And let's do one more blog post below. Click on it. Display blog posts, grid layout with a title excerpt and read more link and two columns and post numbers, all of them. And again, do not allow duplicates. Pagination. Yes. Save it, update it. And now we have a really nice blog post. With one featured block, the latest one, you can click on it with two more and then the other two blog posts. I want to change this to one, so I do that. Post number one. Refresh. And now we have one blog post over here. One over here and then a few over here. One last change, featured image slider. You can of course uh, configure it as you wish. I will say I want to have three over here and the rest I want to have below in grid view. So here I can navigate, read more and here I can read it like this. And again, I can still go to the Enfold settings, to the block layout, and 
block styling, make it default. So I refresh this. And now it looks like this. It's up to you what you want to do. I remove the category widgets. I don't use it. Go to widgets, blog, and remove this. So that's how it works. If I scroll down, I see four widget areas over here and I want to change them. So I go to the widget area again. And here we have footer column one, two, three, and four. And I want to have only three columns. So I go to Enfold over here. Go to the footer. The footer columns, I want it to be three. Save it. I go to Appearance, Widgets. And I go to footer column one. I want to tell something about my company. So I'm searching for the text widget. I click on it and I want to add it into footer column one. Add the widget. And I say 30 Corpus Hook Media. So I save it. Let's see what happens. Here is our first place. And as we had before at the contact page, we have to make our own breaks. So I go back and I say break and another break. So we will have two lineas like this. The second one, I want to have the Facebook like box in column two. And I say WP King. Save it. And the third one again is Enfold Latest News Footer Column 3. How many posts? Five. All categories. Only show the title. And now if we take a look at the blog post footer. We see 30 Corpus Hook Media, W King, Likebox, and our latest blog posts. Also here at Contact, you see them. You see them everywhere. If you don't want to see them on a certain page, then go to Edit Page. And you can go to the footer settings and say, I only want to see the socket or only the widgets. I want to see it everywhere, so I leave it as it is. One more thing, I see the quality is not that great over here. So I edit the page, scroll down, go to the featured image slider. I scroll down, I go to preview image size and I want to choose the preview image size manually. And you see the quality is very low. So I go for extra large. I save it, update it, view the page. And now the quality is better. And now let's go to the portfolio page. On this page, we are going to showcase the things we are making or offering or have done for clients. And in my case, I make photos, videos, and websites. So I'm going to showcase that. And this is the portfolio page. So let's create our first portfolio item. In order to do that, click on new and click on portfolio entry. My first entry is a wedding of Daniel and Leah. I changed the names just for the privacy, and uh, but they're still a really nice couple. So I say wedding, Daniel, and or you know what? Let's make it like this, and Leah. Advanced layout editor, and you know what? A one on one, a content element, and I will use the text block. I click here and I can write a text, but I'm not blogging. So for now I will add the media. How will I do that? I go to add media, upload files, select files, and I go to Enfold, portfolio, photography, Daniel Leah, and I will 
click on the first one, hold shift and select them all and open them. As soon as they're uploaded, I will optimize them for Google. And as you see, I already optimized them by giving all kinds of names. That's very important. If I search for photography, my sluis, this is where I live. And I go to images. This is mine. 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 So you see, if I take a look over here, I click on it. I want to watch the image and it says inside of the city of Maslaus. So you see the title is very important for Google in order to place your image higher in the rankings. Also here, Maslaus. So you can rank really nice if you, if you upload nice titles in your images. So I will remove the dashes and paste it in the alt text. Same goes over here. And I insert them into the post. It can take a while because there are quite a few images. And here they are. I save it for now. I go to Futured Image. I choose a nice image. I like this one. It was a wedding of two couples. Two sisters were marrying on the same day. And I select this as my Futured Image. Also at portfolio, we can have categories. So I will add one. It's called photography. Add a new category. And now I publish it. And I change the date to August the 26th of 2016. Now I want to check my portfolio. So I go to portfolio and you see nothing. Why? Because we have to make a portfolio page of this page. So I say edit this page. Advanced layout editor. No element. I go to content elements and I go for a masonry. I click on it. I select portfolio entries, all the categories. Yes, display sort options show 12 of them that's enough and i leave it as automatic based on screen white display navigation i want to have a load more button order by date descending and this we will take a look into later i don't want to have an overlay that means that the picture is a little bit darker unless you hover over it then it becomes the real color deactivate it and i say save update and before we edit this further we are going to add some more portfolio entries. So right now we have this one. I like it. And the reason, if I make it smaller, the reason that it's totally to the left is because I did not put an element around it. So no one by one, no color section. I just dragged it over here. And when you do that, then it goes outside of the borders of your website, which can be very nice. I like it the way it is. Otherwise, if somebody has a big screen and this is the area, you can see the pictures and now the area is bigger. So the pictures can be bigger. So I like it the way it is. I'm going to show you how to add another portfolio entry, but now show the pictures a different way. And I really like this way. Add new. This is a newborn shoot. It is still photography. It is made in 2014, the 5th of June. So, okay. Advanced layout editor, uh, one by one. Now I go for media elements and I go for a masonry gallery. I click on it and I can add the pictures. I will go to upload files, select the files, photography, newborn shoot, select them all, command A, or control A, and again, I will optimize the pictures. I add them all to the gallery and here I can drag them so I can change it like I want to. And this one I will close because that's for the featured image. Here I can show how many 
numbers. How many columns? For now, I save it. I go to set featured image and that's the close up over here. And I publish it. I refresh the page and here it is. I click on it. And now you see the pictures are like this. If I click on it, I can go to the right and to the left, navigate through them. But actually I want to change this. As you see, there's a light glow over the picture and as I hover over it, so I'm going to edit some settings and now you can see what you can do with this and it's really nice. I go to edit portfolio entry. First, I want to remove the sidebar. No sidebar for this. I click over here and now let's dive into it a little bit more. I want to have three columns. Display, beggar nation, no load more. I want to have a load more button. And here it says it's a flexible masonry. All the images are the same white, but are displayed by the original, original height and white ratio. That's fine. I don't want to have a large gap. I want to have a one pixel gap. No overlay, that's the light thing over the photo. I want to deactivate it. And I want to have a light box and something else. You see the title over here, I don't need that. So I would say at the element captions, no title, display neither of them. Let's view the portfolio entry. And now you see it like this. And this is what I like about Enfold. It looks so clean. I really like it. Especially when you have more pictures. It looks really nice. Let me see if I can find it. Ferdicorpushook.com, my own website. It's looking like the tutorial I'm making. And I go to photography or to portfolio photography. Event photography. And here I have a lot of pictures. What happens? People can navigate through them really quickly. And then they see the picture and they're like, hey, how is my picture after that? And they just go to the right and to the left with the arrows on the keyboard. Really nice way. If they're too much, I just say, go to the next page. And over here, I show 400 images in a really nice way. Again, you see the animation is nice. It's working perfectly, in my opinion. The best gallery I have seen in my life. So, I close this. So what I like about this WordPress website till now, it's really clean. The pictures are clean. There's one pixel gap. If you hover over it, it zooms in a little bit. If you click on it, you can go to the right, to the left. You can navigate very easily. If I scroll down, my logo is nice here. Everything is really nice. That's what I like about this website. I hope you like it too. Okay, next thing. I will add a few more portfolio entries. Add new. So I have now five portfolio entries. I go to portfolio and there they are. It's looking quite nice. Now I'm going to add some films. So I click on new portfolio entry. And again, there's Montana Miziantes. I go to the advanced layout editor, one-on-one. -on -one. And I go to media and add a video. I click on it. I insert the link. We have it already on the website. So I go to blog. Montana. Edit post. Grab the link over here. Paste it over here. And I add a new category. It's called films. Add new category. Scroll down. Set featured image. We already have it over here. And this was in 2014. Okay. Publish. And by the way, this page, you can also set it up 
like we did at the blog post of Montana. So you can also make it like this. Actually, a page, a blog post, and portfolio item have all the same possibilities. Add a new one, and here we have the wedding film of Ruth and Mariska. I go to the advanced layout editor, one on one, content elements, media, drag it over here. Normally, my wife makes a really nice uh, blog post about it. I'm not such a writer, so in this case, you can type it over here, but for now, I leave it. It's just to illustrate how to insert a video. I have the video link over here. I copy it. But for this, there's something slightly different because this is an anamorphic video. So if I go to the format over here, it's not 16 by 90, but it's custom. And the custom ratio for anamorphic is 7 by 3. I save it. Films. Publish. And of course, it was published before. This was not long ago. November 6th update. Now, if you take a look over here, you will see it's anamorphic. Really nice. You see here, like it's on Facebook. So people see that they are happy. And they think I'm going to like them because then I can see more videos like this. That's how it should work. Next one, new portfolio entry. I'm going to fast forward through this. And over here, she's called Sarah Ben Amida. But in the title, it will be a little bit too long. But in the permalink, I can change it. Say Sarah Ben Amida. Burn bright. So I update it. And if I take a look now, you see in the title, it's Sarah Burn bright. But here it's Sarah Ben Hamida Burn bright. So for Google, this is very interesting. Next one. So let's take a look at our portfolio. It's getting bigger and bigger. And this is how it looks like so far. Okay, one more, a few websites. I'm going to show you the first one and then I'm going to fast forward again. It's a little bit the same. Council Sluis NL. advanced one-on-one -on -one image. I scroll down. I'm going to upload all the images at once. Upload files, portfolio, web design, command A, open them. And I will use this website, set featured image. The same goes over here. Insert image, this one. But here I want to have a link. So I want to have a manual link. Advies raad samen levings zaken sluis. That is Dutch. Quite a long URL, but they wanted it. Open in a new tab, in a new window. Add a new category, web design. Edit. This was also 2014, publish. And what I can do now, I can click on templates, save entry as template, and I say web design, save it. Web design. And publish it. Change this to capital update. And if I click on new, I go advanced layout editor, I go to templates, and I say web design. Now the photo is loaded, I click on it, I change it. 
to Jaylee Cosmetics. Jaylee Cosmetics. I save the image here below or load it and that way I can work a little bit faster. I go to the home page and I go to portfolio and here we see it. I think it's a little bit too massive so I edit the page. And I bring this all into a one, one element like this. Like that. And I change the columns to four. Four columns. And let's see. Portfolio entries, yes. Films, photography, and web design. I select them all three. Yes, display sort options. I want to show all. Order by date, descending order. That's also okay. One pixel gap and overlay deactivated. And here I will show you something in a minute. I will update it. Let's see what happens. Now it's looking like this. I don't like the text over here, so I go to masonry, element captions, title, only title, and display on mouse hover. Refresh, and when you hover over it, you will see the title. What you also see, this one is wide, this one is square, also wide. I want to make them all square. How can I do that? I scroll down, I go to these options, flexible masonry, all entries get the same height, but the image of each entry are displayed with their original height and height. If we choose this, it will look like this. The height is always the same and the height is different per picture, as you see. different option, a perfect grid. So all the pictures, also this standing one will be exactly the same, like this. And in this case, I would say, let's change it to three columns. So you can see the pictures better. I like, the, I like this option a lot. You see it's still in the image. Or you can say masonry. Perfect automatic. That is what we had. Or perfect manual masonry. And now we can decide by ourselves which pictures to be standing and which pictures to be Click on here in the new tab and I edit portfolio entry and I say landscape. Add, update, refresh. And now we see this is wider. So I could click over here and if I edit portfolio entry and I go to text, I could say portray and if I add this that means that it will be standing from now on this, this will be a long picture extra wide so now it's long so let's see everything is the same now and that way you can change everything how you want it and if you take a look at ferdicorpshook.com it's my website and I go to portfolio you see all the videos are wide and this is how I do it. For instance, here's a long picture. In that way, you can display everything really nice. I like it. So that's our portfolio. What I like also, if I click on films, I only will see the films. If I click on photography, I only will see photography. If I click on web design, 
I only will see web design. And that's a beautiful way to display your portfolio. What we also can do now, we have over here three widgets. I can go to the back end to unfold to the footer settings, change it to four, save the changes, go to widgets and let's see. Latest news, I drag it to the fourth column. In the third column, I want to have Enfold Latest Portfolio Widget. Column three, Add Widget. How many? Five latest projects. And all the categories show only the title. Save it. Refresh the page. And that's how easy it is. I want to give this also a title. So I go to the widgets again, close this, and I say latest blog posts. Save it. Refresh it. And since we have three titles, I want to have a fourth at the Facebook column and say like us on Facebook. Four titles. <laughs> Maybe change this and then we are finished here. Our company. So it's one line instead of uh, two lines. Maybe, no, I'm finished over here. So this is how it looks like. I really like it, really clean. And let's go to the next page, the services page. For me, it's more important that you learn a few things while I edit this page than that I create a perfect page for this website of my company. So I'm going to show you a few new things with the advanced layout editor. I edit the page, I close this, and of course we go to the advanced layout editor. I start with a color section, content element, and a special heading. I want to write a text over here. I don't know if this English is correct. Centered, and it will probably be a long sentence. So let's see how it is looking. Okay, it's okay. I think we can make it bigger. So here it, I can say make it 35. Update. Great. What we can do, since we have a color section, I click over here at the color section settings. I go to the background. I insert an image. Upload a file. And I go to home. Portray a slash. I open it full size, insert it, and I save it and I want my text to be white. So I go to the content, special heading, colors, and I want to have a custom color, which is white. I save it, update it, and refresh the page. Now it looks like this. The text is readable. It's a white text on a dark background, but I want to see her face. So I will go to the color section. I will change the height to 700 pixels. And I go to the section background and I say, make it a parallax background. Update, refresh. Now you see her better and this is what I like. But now you see, because there's a white text over a light area in the photo, we can do something else. We can edit the page, go to the color section settings, go to the section background overlay, and now we can make an overlay color. So for instance, I say black and the opacity is 1.0. And you probably will have a black background. 
like this. So I put it on 0.7 or 0.6. Let's see what happens. You still see her, but now you can also read the text. I'm going to get rid of the services. So I go over here to the right title bar. I say hide both. And I want to give this a transparent and glassy header. Refresh. Now it looks like this. Services, we love what we do. We make photos, films, blah, blah, blah. And what else can we do? I want to change the height to 400 pixels. So I go to color section settings. The minimum height is 400 for the custom height. Save it, refresh it like this. I like it. Okay, the next thing is gonna be a one on one. I can click over here and instead of dragging, it will appear down below. So if I click again on one third, you will see it appears over here. And I want to open this again. So I have the whole view. And here I have a one on one. I cannot put a one third in the A one on one. But what I can do, if I get a color section, I can do that. So I'm going to create three sections of videography, photography, and web design. And I start with photography. I go for a special heading and I say photography. Header three in the middle. And then I'm going to create a text block. I drag it below. A simple text, I save it, and now I go to media elements and I want to add a easy slider like this. I open it and I want to add some photos. I set this to no scaling and these images, it would be the best if they're all the same height and white. So I'm going to try it. Let's see. I grab this one and grab a few photos. I hope they're all cropped the same. We'll see. I insert them into the image. I can change the order. No scaling. The slideshow transition will be a fade. Auto rotation. Yes. Every three seconds. Save it and update it. Here you see photography. We love photography. And here's the first image, second, and the third, and the fourth. It's not satisfying yet, so I duplicate this. I close this, close this, and then I go for content elements and I go for an icon box. Over here, I click on it and I want to display an icon above the title and this icon will be a photography icon. I scroll down and the text is still photography. I save it. I grab this text, copy it, click on the icon and paste the text over here. I save it, refresh it. And in my opinion, this looks a little bit better. So this one I remove like this. And this one I will use. I'm going to duplicate it twice. And here is web design. I start with web design because it will be the same ID as photography, web design. And I will create a text over here. I scroll up and I change the icon to this one, save it, and I change over here the easy slider images. I remove those. And of course, I add these images. Click on this one, hold shift, click on the first one and insert them into the image. Save it, update, refresh. 
I don't like that they doesn't show up at the same time. Maybe if I remove this one, it will happen. So I click on this icon box. I search for this video option. I say films. And make a text over here. Save it. I click on the easy slider. I remove all the images. And I want to add a single image or a video. I click on it. I go to a video link. Copy the link. I change the image slide to a video slide. I can upload a video or I choose this one. I can have a fallback image. If the video does not start, I can choose an image. It's about Montana. So I could choose this picture. Video aspect ratio is 16 by 19. Hide video controls. I can mute the video player. I can loop the video and I can make it auto play. I can apply a link or add some text to the video, but I don't want that. I save it. I update it and let's take a look. You see the pictures are changing automatically and here the video is starting. It's not exactly the same height as this over here. So what I prefer to use is 16 by 90 aspect ratio. That's a video image. This is it already. This is it not. And what I can do, I go to the back end. We have again a color section. I can edit the settings. I go to the background and I say insert an image. I upload the file. I go to web design and grab this as a background. Here I already made a different overlay color in Photoshop. You can do it also in the website. So I did not have to do this. I insert it. I make it fixed. Update. Refresh the page. Now you see the background is stuck. I really like that. So if you scroll, the background will be still at the same place. And in order to make it perfect, I'm going to change this also. So I remove those images. Go to add some images, upload files, select files, go to Enfold, to Home, Photography, and I upload those four pictures. And we can insert them into the slider, update. And now we have a really nice overview of the services we offer. As you see, all the same height, white. So really nice. I'm going to tell something about photography. So I go back again to a color section. From now on, I will use the color section every time I click on it once. Now it is created over here. And I want to have one third at the left and two thirds at the right. I get a special heading. I drag it over here. I drag it below to the one third and say photography. H1 default style. And then I want to have a text block. I drag it over here. So I have text over here. I make a new Alinea, save it, and I call this wedding photography. And here at the right, we did it already, but we are going to do it again. I want to have a masonry gallery, so I go to media elements, masonry gallery. I'm going to add some photos and I grab all the wedding photos I have. So let me see those over here. 
add them to the gallery. You can change the order and insert them into the gallery. Again, all images, automatic, based on screen wide, flexible masonry, you can do whatever you want to. I choose one pixel gap, no overlay, and I want to have a light box. And here we have it. I don't like this, so I will change a few other things. You know what? I will choose for three columns and I go to element captions and I don't want to have a title and no excerpt. So I save it, update it, refresh it, and it looks like this. If you click here, you can navigate through it. Really nice. What I will do now in order to save time, I will copy this color section of wedding photography. I click here. Now we have another one. I drag this to third section to the left like this. And here I say films. Save it. You can have a text about films. What I will do now, I will change the background color to this color. Save it. Then I go to films. I click on it. I click on colors and I want to change the colors to white because we have a blue background. I want to have a different text. Same goes for here. I click over here at the text block, go to colors. I change these colors to white like this. Save it, update, refresh, and here it is. Again, those images. Maybe I want to show uh, a portfolio area over here. So I click over here. And I remove this masonry gallery, but I go to content elements. And I go for a masonry. I click here and I select portfolio entries and films. No sort display options. Maximum of 12. Two columns. No pagination. Based on the date. Descending order. One pixel gap. No overlay. Save it. Update it. And refresh the page. And then it looks like this. I don't like it. So again, I change it. No title and captions or excerpts. And I want to have a perfect grid like this. So they will all behave like this. Much better in my opinion. And you can click on it and then you go to the video or to the link. Again, I click here, I scroll down and I copy wedding photography, the whole color section and I press command minus, 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 minus a few times. And then I want to drag this below the films. A few more time, minus, minus, minus. Drag it like this or drag this one below those two. And now you see, I press command zero again. We can change this really easily to web design. Save it. At this moment, I delete this one. I duplicate this masonry because I have all the right settings. Then I press command minus, 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 minus again. I drag it over here, click on it, press command minus, and now just change this to web design and we are good to go. Update, refresh, films, and web design. I can change it to three columns. That's way better. 
three columns, and also here, three columns. Save it. And what I want to do now, one more blue area. So that's the film area. I'm going to duplicate it. Command minus, 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 minus. And here you see films. I drag this one above it. And I remove this stuff. Command zero, by the way. And I go for a text block. I go to the back end of the website to contact, copy this code and paste it over here. Then I go to colors. They have to be white. Save it, update. Let's take a look at services. Like this. And what we can do now, it's really interesting. I'm going to add a few buttons. So over here, let's see a button. I say, more information and I want to set the link manually to pound sign and then I say photography and I don't want to have an icon no icon let's see how it looks refresh and I like it the way it is. And if I click here, you see nothing happens. Why is that? We have to make an anchor link for this link over here. So I copy this here. I go to edit page. And because we work with color sections, a color section can have an anchor link. So I click on the settings of photography, wedding photography. And here at the for developer section ID, we can add this over here, photography, update refresh and if we click here i scroll automatically down to wedding photography so that's a really nice way to navigate through the website so i will duplicate this and again and here i say link should be films and here I say, it should be web design. I duplicate it again. Over here. And I drag it over here and I say over here, contact. And here I make it contact. I duplicate it again. Command minus, minus, minus. I drag it over here and below. I duplicate it again. And I drag it here below. And again, command zero. I go to layout elements because then I have more space. Wedding photography, we have an anchor link. Films, we do not have an anchor link over here yet. So I say films at web design. We say web design, save it. And then here, of course, we say contact, save it. And this is our services page. Refresh the page. Be careful not to have already an anchor link over here. So I go to services. We have a nice text with a background. That's parallax. We have three services, photography, films, and web design with some images or a video. 
If I click on more information, I go to wedding photography. If I click here, I go to films. And if I click here, I go to web design. When somebody sees these pictures, they could think, wow, I want to have contact with those people for my own wedding. You can click on contact and voila, you go to the contact form. Also here and the other one. So that's what you can do with the Enfold theme. Don't you love it? I hope you love it. Maybe this is a good time. If you're still watching and you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It would help me a lot. And I really hope you like this theme as much as I do. And what we are going to do now, I go to edit the page, close this, and I make a template of this. And I call this services. And I save it. I update it. And I have to say, I'm quite happy with what we have made over here. Let's go to the last page, the home page. I remove this one, I close it. And now I say edit the front page and they always open in a new tab. So I close this one and we go to the advanced layout editor. I go to templates and I click on services. And I update it and take a look. And this is our home page right now. With a few clicks, we have exactly the same page. Of course, we don't want to have exactly the same page, but I want to use this also on my front page. So that saves us quite some time. What we will do over here, I will go to the settings. Title bar settings, I don't want it. And the transparency of the header, I want to have a transparent and glassy header. I don't need a featured image and I don't need this color section. I don't need this one, this one, this one, and this one. I actually only need this area. What I will do, I will make a media element and it's called the full screen slider. I drag it here at the top. I click on it. And this is what I love about this theme. I'm going to add a few images. You can find them in the home folder. Home. Let me see. 9020 by 1080. Or a little bit bigger. Now I'll use them all except for this folder. And I say open. Insert the images. You can change the order and I always say no scaling. I want to have it a parallaxed and faded. I want to make auto rotation active every four seconds and slideshow controlling style default. You see errors at the side. Display a scroll down arrow. I like it also and use first slides caption as permanent caption. I will show you what it means. If I click on the first image, I can add some captions. By the way, I can also say where does the picture be focused? I will show you in a minute how it works. I go to caption and I say Ferdi Korpersuk Media. We love what we do and maybe we can help you. Something like that. I can make the size very big, 40 and 30. I can choose where I want the set text to be. I will say center without frame. And I can have two buttons. The first one is portfolio. Light transparent. We can change the color style. And the first link should be to our portfolio page. It's the portfolio page. You can also select a blog post or something else. And the second one is contact. Again, light transparent, set it to a page. And of course it will be the contact page open in the same window. I say save, save, update. And let's take a look at our homepage. Free the Corpsuk Media, we love what we do and maybe we can help you. 
contact and portfolio. And what you see right now, the text is gone. If you want to have it permanently over here, click on the full screen slider again. I'm getting excited. I really love this. You know, sometimes the, the block thing and the setting up everything can be a little bit boring. And this is what I like the most, the full screen slider, the way Enfold works with the advanced layout editor. And I'm fin finally getting to it. Maybe I should change the tutorial around and show you immediately how great this is. But maybe next time there will come a lot more tutorials. Uh, let me see. Where was I? Oh, yeah. Here, use first slides captions as permanent captions. And actually, I think the captions may be a lot bigger. So let's make this 55 and this one 40. Save it, save it, update it, refresh. And as you see, it's a great way to show immediately to people what you're capable of. People say, hey, okay, this is not my picture. I have to be honest with you. But you say, okay, that's quite a nice picture. Hmm, maybe it's good. Oh, he also does love shoots. Okay. So in that way, you can showcase your stuff. As you see, again, the, the text is a little bit hard to read on some images. And then, and to solve that, you can go to the full screen slider, click on it, and go to captions, and say center framed. If you do that, it will look like this. I don't like it as much, but in that case, you can watch the text on every image like that. So if there's the image with the white background, you still see it. Then you can go to portfolio or to contact. So that's how it works. Really nice. And then we have here our things. And if we click on more information, nothing happens because we don't have an anchor link below as in the services page. So we have to change those. So I click here, change it to a page, the photography page, and this one to a page, the films page. We did not do this in the tutorial, but uh, my purpose is to show you how it works and how you can do it yourself. Otherwise the tutorial will be too long and web design. And what I like to show after that, I open this like this again. I go to the layout elements, color section. I add a special header, bring it to the center and it's called latest projects h1 in the center and the default size can be 40 and below that i want to show a masonry again like this i click on it i go for portfolio entries all of them so i don't select them no sorting options display four numbers, four columns, no pagination, order by date and make it a perfect grid, one pixel gap, no overlay deactivated, no element, captions and stuff. And then I duplicate it, so I have it here again and I say latest blog posts and the colors I want to make them white and why because the background is already white because I want to change the latest blog post color background to blue change the section background color to this color save it then I go to the masonry of the blog posts because it's still a duplicate of the projects of the portfolio projects so I change this to category and I don't select anything, so it will select everything. And I save it, update, refresh the page. So we have our images over here, our text, our call to actions. 
here an overview of our services. We can go to the page, our latest projects and our latest blog posts. What I like to do, one more thing, go to the projects, go to element captions and say display title only on mouse hover. Same goes for blog posts, element captions, display title only on mouse hover. Save it, update it, refresh for hover, you'll see the title. One more thing for the homepage. I'm going to upload a new image over here. Full screen slider, add an image, upload a file, select files, go to Enfold, Home, Photographer Rotterdam. Here it is. It's not full HD, but that's no problem. I insert the image. I want to drag it up like this, like this, save it, update it. And let's take a look over here. It's looking really nice. But if I want to take a look at this photo on a smartphone or a tablet, it would look like this. And you don't see the couple and I want to see the couple. So you can change the focus of the image. As you see, this person is in the view. She is not, he is, he is not. So how can we change that? Go to edit page to the full screen slider. And if I go to an image, I see the image position is at the top left. So if you watch this on a smartphone or a tablet, the focus will be on this area. But the couple is here at the right in the middle. So I go for center right over here. And now if I save it, I save it, I update it. Nothing will change on these images on a desktop. But if I take a look and on a smartphone and I refresh this page, you will see the couple is now in the middle of the picture. So in that way, you can change it everywhere. So that's how it is done. Let me go to the about page, the latest page. The latest page about me, I forgot it. I will do it uh, fast forward because it doesn't take too long and I think I showed you a lot about the advanced layout editor so you know how it works now. So let's fast forward. Okay, one more thing. Uh, we have testimonials. I click on it. I walk you through it. The first name is Leanne. And she can have titles. She's CEO of... Uh, times ready I don't know <laughs> insert an image of her upload a file let me grab those four images or three and four open it and let's start with the first one insert it and I make up his name he will be Derek You can have a website, this one, website name is times. I save it and I save it and I update it and I check it. I have a text over here about photo. You deserve it to be seen with a color overlay. This can be bigger, this can be lower or less high. Derek. Really nice guy, but I can't read what he's saying. This is how it looks like. Now, you don't see a lot. So let's see what we should change. The colors should be default. Testimonial grid, I want to have it large. And outer rotation, even though he's the only one, I click over here. And there's no text. I don't know why. So save it. Let's see. So that's how it looks like now. I can 
go to the right or the left if I have more testimonials. So next one, I want to copy and add one. So I change the name and I change the picture. This one is Claire. Claire, she has no title. Save. Save. Right now, update it. Refresh it. And you can toggle. And you can go to the right. Like this. I will duplicate them for now. So I can say copy and add. And then we can showcase them a different way. Make it a testimonial grid with two columns, update, refresh. Now it looks like this. And also here you can make it a different background. Insert an image, insert image overlay, black, point eight, save it, update it, refresh. And that's how it looks like then. So if we take a look at our website, we go to the homepage, a nice image. You can say something about yourself, call to action. You can show something about your services. People can watch photos and videos. They can click on more information and then go to that page in the website. An overview of our latest projects, really nice animation. Our widgets about our company, like us on Facebook, our latest projects and latest blog posts, some information about our website, some social media stuff, an about page, about me, a nice title, some testimonials, our services, a page with an overview of what we are capable of. You can click here and go to the link immediately. Really nice. A contact form, if you click on contact, you go to the contact form. By the way, if you click over here, you go back up. A portfolio page where you can select what you want to see. You click on something. You see the pictures over here. There are also different ways to show pictures. Our blog with a nice blog overview. No duplicate posts. You can read more over here. And then go to a different blog post. As you know, Montana Lisiantes. You can change the blog however you want it. Start with a video with a nice title. With a video over here. And we have our contact page where people can get information about us and get in contact with us. Let's go to the back end of our website. Go to plugins, add new. Here we can search for WooCommerce, press enter. And you'll see WooCommerce by automatic. It's downloaded already over a million times and it's updated recently. This is the plugin we want to install. I click on install now. Now we can activate it by clicking over here. Immediately we can configure WooCommerce. So I want to do that. I click on let's go. The page setup. This means that WooCommerce will install four pages on our WordPress website. Shop, cart, checkout and my account. You need those four pages in order to create a web shop. I click on continue. Where is your store based? I would say in the United States. In California. I will use dollars, which unit do we want to be, LBS, kilogram, grams, something else. I leave it as this and here I can choose your product dimensions, meters, centimeters. I use inches and I click on continue. Shipping and tax is something we will take a look into later. So I skip this step. I will also skip the payment method for now. Skip this step. If you want to help WooCommerce, you can help them by clicking this link, allow them to see some information. I say allow, 
You can learn more over here and you can create your first product. But before we do that, I click on return to the WordPress dashboard. And now in our dashboard, we see a new WooCommerce tab over here. I want to do a few things. If I go to my website in a new tab by holding command, here is our menu with our menu items and I want to create a new menu item, which is shop. So I go to the back end. I go to appearance, menus. Here you see our new four pages, my account, checkout, cart and shop. I want to add shop. So I select it over here and I add it to the menu. I scroll down and here you see it. I drag it above contact. I click over here and I want to make it capitals. So I select it and I say in capitals shop. You can highlight it if you want to. So I save it. I refresh the page and now we have shop over here. Now I want to go to the settings of the images we want to display in our products. So I go to the backend again. I go to WooCommerce to settings and I want to go to products, the second tab over here. And then we have some sub tabs and I want to go to display. If you upload images to WooCommerce, it can be that the resolution will be very low and it looks really ugly. So here at product images, we can make this bigger. I like to put it all on 1200. Like this and I want to save it. Okay, now let's go to the front end, go to the shop page and you see there are no products found. We have to create our first product. In order to do that, we go to the upper bar, click on product, or we go to the back end to products and add a new products, or we click on products and we create our first product. It doesn't matter. They're all going to the same page. So I click here on create your first product. I want to start with a simple product. It's one product with one color, one size, no variables with a nice image, a text and a price. So in order to do that, let's dismiss this and we need to give this a <laughs> wait a minute. I don't want to see this. Yes. No. Okay. That's it. No, that's it. <laughs> what is this? How many times do you have to click? Yes, it's gone. Sorry. You need to give it a product name. I want to sell a hoodie. So I just say hoodie. And you know what? I want to publish it immediately. So if we go to the shop page and we refresh it, you see it over here. And if you click on it, you see the title, you see an image area, you see a review and you see where you are home shop hoodie. So let's start working on this product. I go to the back end again. I scroll down. There are two areas where you can add information about your product. Here we can add a long description. So let's say two alineas or three alineas. And here below you see product short description. Here you can say this is an amazing hoodie that will keep you warm in the winter. It is 75% cotton and 25% polyester. I'm just making something up. Update what you will see now. You see a short description over here. There's an amazing hoodie. And here you see a longer description. So that's how it works. I would keep it clean over here. Just a little bit of information. You need to see the buy button. So let's go to the back end. And here we see product data. If you don't see this area, then scroll up, go to screen options. And here you can select product data. There are a few different kind of products we can offer. We have a simple product, a grouped product. We can have an affiliate product or an external product and a variable product. I will walk through all these products and start with a simple product. Is it virtual? No, it's not. It's a hoodie. You can hold it in your hands. And is it downloadable? No, you can hold it in your hands. It's not downloadable. The price, what will the price be of this hoodie? I think $40 is a nice price. You can also have a sale price so you can make it $30. And you can also say the next seven days, 
it is a sale price worth. So I click on schedule and the sale price is from today until next week. So next week it will automatically be removed the sale price. So it will be $40 again. And right now it is $30. If we go to inventory, you can add a stock keeping unit. You can make this up by yourself, but maybe you're selling a product from a different person. So let's see. Let's click over here and then you need to find a code and I can find it over here. This code, if you search for this code, you will see the Adidas shirt also at adidas.nl style fell $30. So this number is related to this Adidas t-shirt. So what I can do, if this was the Adidas t-shirt, I could paste it over here and in that way it is linked to the product. This is a simple hoodie. So I call this 0001. You can manage the stock if you want to. So if you enable it, you can say I have 10 hoodies in stock. And if you save it, you will see it over here that you have 10 hoodies in stock. And if somebody buys a hoodie and he pays, then it will be nine in stock. So that's all automatic. Allow back orders. It means that you still can order even though there's no stock and then you will send it later. I do not allow this. And you also can manually say it is in stock or out of stock. So let's say it's out of stock and I update it and I refresh this. So what do you see? The title over here from $40 for $30 and after seven days it will be $40 again. It will all be automatic. The small description, it's currently out of stock and this is the stock keeping unit number. And here's the long description. And you see here it's a sale because it's from 40 for $30. Of course, it's in stock. So change it over here in stock. We will skip shipping for now. And if we take a look at linked products, you can upsell. So for instance, if I have different products, I can say, I can say how I select this one t-shirt. I click on it and if I update it right now, you see related products, but if I refresh it, you see, you may also like, so that's what happens if we go back and we go to linked products and say cross sell. And I search for Divi and I save it and I add this to cart. I want to view the cart Then here's the cross sell. You may also be interested in and if you want to see more information about all these things over here, then just hover over the question mark and it will explain itself. You can also promote products at the cart checkout. We take a look at attributes in the next product and advanced. You can have some purchase notes over here and you can enable reviews right now. If we go back to shop, hoodie, you see no review, but if you enable it and you save it, you see a new tab over here, which is reviews. And there are no reviews yet. We will take a look into this later. What we can do right now, we see we're at home shop hoodie, but we can also create categories and subcategories. If you have a very big shop with a lot of products, you want to create categories and subcategories. In order to do that, go to the product and scroll down here at the right. You see product categories. And I want to add a new category, which is called merchandise. I add a new category. I can also create a subcategory so I can say hoodies and then the parent category of hoodies is merchandise. I add the new category and what you will see, it's a child of merchandise. So if I update it and I refresh it, you see home shop merchandise hoodies hoodie. So if you have a big shop, then you can navigate over here and if you click here, you see all of products that are in the category merchandise or if you want to filter it down you can select all the hoodie products by clicking here so that's how it works let's create an image over here i go to the back end i scroll down and at the right you will see product image 
If you want to follow along with the same products as in this tutorial, then go to 30corporacehook.com. Go to Tutorials, WooCommerce Tutorial 2017. Click on it, scroll down, and here it says download images I use in the tutorial. I will click on it and here they go, WooCommerce. I click on it again and here they are, WooCommerce 2017. I drag them to the desktop and here they are. These are the products we will use. And this is the hoodie of the hoodie product we are creating. So I close this. I go to the back end and I set a product image. I can upload files over here. I select the files. I go to the desktop, WooCommerce 2017, and I select this one and those other two already. I click over here. I hold shift and click on the third one and I open them all. I click on the first one and I remove the dash over here copy this title and bring it into the alt description. The same I do over here, hoodie side, copy, paste, over here, copy, paste. And I want to use this one as the product image. So I select it and I set the product image, update. And now this image is linked to the product. So if I refresh this, you see the product over here, you can click on it. Really nice. If I go to shop over here, you see the hoodie from $40 for 30, it's a sale. You can add it to cart immediately. You see it over here and over here, or you can click on it and you can get more information and add even more to the cart. With the Envol theme, you can also get an hover image. So if I go to the back end, I scroll down, here it says product hover, no hover effect and I will say yes, show first gallery image on hover. So we need to go to product gallery, add a new image, I add a product gallery image and I can select this one, it's the back, add it to the gallery and after that I can add even more. This one is from the side, I can also add it to the gallery. Depending on the theme, it can be displayed different ways. With Enfold, it will be shown like this. I refresh it. The first one, the second one, the third one. So if I click over here, I can navigate to the right, to the left, and that's how it is shown. If I go to Shop again, and I hover over it, you see the back of this hoodie. So that's really nice. Right now you see here, if you are at the blog page, you still will see this over here. If you scroll down, you will see it. If you use the Envol theme and you want to change this, I also want to remove this border. So I go to the back end. First I go to Appearance Menus and I go to Shop, Default Style, Save Menu. Then I go to Envol over here. I click on it. I go to shop options and here it says header shopping cart icon right now it's here at the right and i want it to be in the main menu i save it i go to the website so if somebody enters this website they can see immediately i can buy something over here and if i go to the shop and i add it to the cart it will be updated immediately you can go to the checkout or you can go to view the cart. You can change stuff over here, update the cart. Later in this tutorial, we will add coupon codes. And if we proceed to checkout, you need to fill in your details and then you can select the payment method. We'll take a look into that also. So that was our first product, a simple product. Let's take a look at a variable product. If I want to add a variable product, I add a product over here. I click over here. And this one is a t-shirt. And again, here you can have a long description and here you can have a short description. I will leave it empty for now. And I select a variable product over here. The SKU, I leave it as this. 
because we will add variations in this product. So I don't want to manage the stock. I leave this as it is. I go to attributes and here we can add an attribute. What is an attribute? For instance, the size or the color or the version. So I click on add to add an attribute and the name is size. And here I can enter more values and I can separate them by the vertical bar. So I can say small vertical bar, medium, large, and extra large. Or if you prefer S, M, L, XL. I want it to be visible on the product page and I want to use this for variations. And you need to check this, it's important. Because if you check this, we can add some different variation and I will explain you later why. Save attributes. And I want to add another one. So I click on add. I scroll down and here I say color. And I have two colors. The first one is white and the second one is black. And this one I want to use for variations. And what will we do in variations if you have four sizes and two colors let's do the math how many variations do you have small white medium white large white extra large white and the same for black so eight different variations so i save this again and i go to variations and i click over here and i say create variations from all attributes so we just created two attributes with four options and two options and this will create variations from those attributes that will be two times four equals eight. Are you sure you want to do this? Yes, I'm sure you can do maximum of 50 per run. Okay. And there are eight variations added. Okay. XL black, XL white, etc. I expand them all by clicking this over here. Now I can add different information on all those products. So for instance, this is a black t-shirt. So I click over here to upload an image. I upload files, select files, and here they are. Black t-shirt back, black t-shirt front, and from the white also. So I select them all four, optimize them. And I start with the black t-shirt, the front. Set variation image. And here I want to select the white t-shirt, the front t-shirt. And here again, the black. And the white. The black one. The white one. The black one. And the latest one, a white one again. Meanwhile, I want to save it. Or I want to publish it. The category is t-shirts, which is also a child of merchandise. So I add a new category and I select merchandise and I publish it. Then I scroll down again and I continue. I go to variations, expand them all. And what I need to do I need to fill in the SKU number. So 0002 version one. So I copy this one and the second one two. The third one three. The fourth one four. So every single variation has a different SKU number. Five, six, seven, Eight. That's it. Now I want to create a price for all the different variations and it is the same. So I do a bulk action. I click over here. I go to pricing and I say set regular prices. Go. And this one will be $20. I say, okay. I want to save everything. Expand it. And here you see regular price 20, 20, 20. So I did it everywhere. Let's take a look. 
publish it again. Go to products, refresh the page. And however, if you select the S size and the white color, you will see this t-shirt over here. But if you don't choose an option, there's nothing. So we go to the back end and we still need to create a product image. Set product image. You can choose to have a white one or a black one. I will do a white one. Set product image. And I want to have a hover effect. And that will be the back of the t-shirt. Now I go to the variations over here. Let's add a variation about manage stock. So we need to toggle it. So we click on go. And then one more thing. We have toggled manage stock. And now we need to fill in the stock. Go. And that will be 10 t-shirts per color and per size. So I have a total of 80 t-shirts in my stock. I click on OK. Update. Refresh. And it is originally white. But if I choose the size M for instance and the color black, you see it's changing. There are 10 in stock. So if you buy five, it will be five left in stock. Here is the SKU number. The categories are merchandise and below that t-shirts. People can leave review over here. And here's the second image of the back. What we can do, we can change the price for every size or color. So I go to the back end, scroll down the variations. And let's say I want the XL versions to be more expensive. So they go to $30. Also the white one, $30. I update it. And I refresh the page. What will happen? You see the price is between $20 and $30. Why is that? If you go for the size M and the color white, it will be $20. But if you go for the black or the white t-shirt of XL, it will be $30. And in that way, you can bring variations to one single product. So you can add sizes, colors, versions, whatever you want to do. If we go to the back end, you can scroll down and you can add product tags. It can be t-shirts, add summer, Whatever you want to do, and in that way, you can be found in Google a little bit better. So you can use it if you want to. And I update it. And I refresh. Now you see over here the text summer t-shirts. Maybe you think this is a little bit small. If I go to Enfold, add font styling. And I change this to 20. I save all the changes. It becomes bigger. If you use a different theme, your title will probably be the right size. But I thought this one is a little bit small. Okay, let's add a new product over here. New product. And I want to add a service as a product. So it's not a tangible product. It's a digital product. So I call this Skype Session of one hour. I don't do this in real life, but for the sake of the tutorial, I will use it as a service product. I scroll down, I will use a simple product, but it's virtual. If I click over here, what do you see? The shipping tag will be gone because it's a virtual product. The regular price is $130 per hour, but this time it's $70 per hour. I go to inventory. And I say SKU0003. I don't have stock because it's a virtual product. And I want to add a category which is services. It's not below merchandise because it has nothing to do with merchandise. I publish it and I view the product. And now people can buy this a lot of times. I don't want it. It should be one buy button and not with how many products you want to add to cart. So I go back, edit the product, I scroll down and at the tab inventory, I say sold individual. Update. 
refresh. Now it's only add to cart. You can still buy this together with a different product. So if I add this to cart, you see I've bought a few hoodies and a Skype session. So you can do it the same, but you only can have a quantity of one. There are no attributes or advanced things. It's just a virtual product. I can place Canon Skype with me and ask all the questions about an online business or online marketing. Let's add an image, product image, upload files, select files, Skype call, this one, that's me. Set product image. And what I can do, we did not take a look at this yet. If I go to advanced, you can have a purchase note and I can say, I will contact you as soon as possible. Enable reviews. So let's take a look now. View the product in a new tab. I close this one. Skype session of one hour, not $130, but $70. Get on Skype with me and ask all the questions about online business and online marketing. Add to cart, SKU003, category services, and there are no reviews yet. So that's how it works. So if we take a look now at our shop over here, you see there are three products. Right now I will create a grouped product. So I click over here at new product. I close this one. I call this one USB stick. I scroll down. It's not a simple product, but it's a grouped product. Zero, 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 six. It's in stock and you see there's no price. This is a parent product. A group product is a parent product and it will have child products beneath it. But because this is the parent product, we need to have a title. We can have some description or a short description. Choose a USB stick. Let's have a product image. Upload files, select files. USB, open it and insert it. Okay, let's create a category. For now, I use merchandise. Let's click on publish. And if I take a look over here, you see this is a product and we have no price. So what do we need to do? I go back and add a new product. And I call this USB stick 32 gigabyte. I scroll down, I select merchandise. So right now we are making the child product of the parent product. So this is a grouped product and beneath that we will add a few simple products that are the child products of the parent product. Yes, okay, let's create a price. I think the worth of this is $20. And just like other simple products, you can do a lot of stuff over here. I leave it for now. I say 32 gigabyte USB stick. No product hover, no image. Only thing I need to do, catalog visibility. I don't want this to be seen as a standalone product. So I click on edit and I say, hide this from the catalog, only show it as a child product. Publish it. And if we go to this product and we refresh it, you will see nothing. So we need to edit this product right now and I scroll down. Now I go to linked products, grouped products, and I search for USB. And here it is, 32 gigabyte. I update it. I want to view the product. And now you see the USB stick of 32 gigabytes for $20. So let's add a new product. I copy this, add a product. Right now, it's 64. 
I scroll down, the price is $35. Edit, hide it, and publish it. And let's create a third one. USB stick, 128 gigabytes for $45. Hide it, okay, and publish it. Edit this product one more time. I scroll down, I go to linked products, and I type USB 64 and USB 128. Update, I close this one, I view the product. And there you go, 128, 64, and 32. I will talk about the sidebar, about WooCommerce widgets, and about this area over here. But first, I want to create two more products. And the next one is an ebook, a digital product. So I hover over new and I create new product. I close this tab. And this is the ebook called How to Become an Online Entrepreneur. I scroll down. And I say it's a simple product, it's a virtual product, and it's downloadable. The price is $15, there's no sale, and I can add an ebook over here. I can add a file. The file name is How to Become an Online Entrepreneur. And I want to choose a file, I upload it, I select the file. This one is not included in the WooCommerce 2017 zip file. I select it and I open it. I can rename it. Copy it and paste it and I insert the file URL. So this is what people will see after they bought the file. They will get a download link with the name how to become an online entrepreneur and with the file. They can have a download limit, for instance, if they have downloaded it three times, then that is the limit. So you can say three. If you leave this empty, they can download it unlimited times. And you can say you can download it for 30 days. I don't see a reason why you should do that because if they lose it, they will email you and then you can send it manually. If you say it's unlimited, then they can download it over and over again. Here's a short product description and I paste it. And I want to add an image, so I go to product image, upload files, select a file. Here it is. I open it, optimize it, and set product image. Maybe you want to add a product tag, ebook. Online marketing, online entrepreneur, new category, ebooks, and then you can publish it. View the product, ebook How to Become an Online Entrepreneur, $15. Some text, categories, nice image. And I want to change this, so I go back to the back end, scroll down, go to inventory, and check sold individually. Update, refresh, add to cart. So that looks nice. And the last product we will create is an external product, or maybe better known as an affiliate product. I click on new product and I'm going to create an external product about a WordPress theme that I really like. It's called the Divi theme. I scroll down, the price is around $80 or you know what, the real price is 90, but a lot of times it's for 80 or maybe for $70. So it's a virtual product. It's not downloadable because I will send people to a different site. And before I go on, 
I need to change it to external affiliate product. The product URL. I will add my affiliate product. You can go to Elegant Themes. Scroll down. Become an affiliate. Sign up. You follow all these steps, then you get an affiliate link. You can paste it over here. And then you can say get the theme or try the theme. Product description. And then I need to have a product image. I upload a file. It is this one. Open. Optimize it. Set product image. Text. Divi. Add. Themes. And here I can say WordPress themes at the category. And I think that's it. I publish it. And if I go to the website, I close this one. I go to shop. It says the Divi theme. And I can click on get the theme. And there it is. If somebody buys it now, I get a commission. So that's how it works. For me, it's no problem that they are off my site if they click here, because my goal is to help them to get this theme. So it's a good thing that they clicked on my link. And that is how it works. So I've created five different products. Let's go back to 30 Corp or to your website. And if we go to shop, we have a sidebar over here with pages, with categories and the archive. This is not what I want to have. So let's add some WooCommerce widgets here at the sidebar. In order to do that, go to the backend to widgets. And here you see shop overview page. This is a sidebar and in a sidebar, you can add widgets. So I scroll down and I search for the WooCommerce cart. I click on it once, I scroll down and I search for shop overview page. I click on it and I say add widget. And what it does, it will show you the cart. And you can hide the cart if it's empty. So I check that and I save it. I go to the shop page. And now it says cart four times the hoodie, one time Skype session. And that's how it works. I can add a second widget in the sidebar. How can I do that? I go back to widgets. I can collapse this one. I scroll down again and I go for price filter. I like that one, especially if, if you have a big website, it's already selected. I click on add widget filter by price. I save it, refresh and here you can filter by price. So you see this one is $80, $15, $30 and $70 and maybe I say I want to spend the maximum of $50. So you releases it and say filter. And what you'll see, there are three products that are between 15 and $50. Maybe he says I want to spend between 25 and $50. So in that way, you can filter all your products. It's a really nice way to filter down things. Filter by price. I recommend it to you. Let's add another one. I scroll down. And here it says WooCommerce products. I click on it. Add the widget. And the titles products. You can show five or more products. We have only five right now. And I want to show all the products or only the featured products or on sale. Order by date, price, or random. I like random. And you can hide free products or show hidden products. I like it as it is. I save it. I refresh. And now you see the hoodie is above, but because it's random, I can refresh again. And now the Divi themes is above. So that's also a really nice widget to show on your website.
If we take a look at the settings of WooCommerce, then we can go into the backend to WooCommerce settings and we go to products, display, then here the shop page can be selected. Right now it's the shop page and the display you can show products, that's what we do right now, but you also can show categories. If you do that and you save it and you refresh this page, you see all the categories, ebooks, merchandise, services, and WordPress themes. You see there are no pictures over there. If you want to have pictures, you can go to the backend to WooCommerce products and categories over here. Then you click on ebooks, for instance, and you need to upload a thumbnail. I will use the one I have already, which is this one, update it. Now we'll do the same with the other categories and subcategories. So right now they all have an image. So if I refresh this, it looks like this. I have to say, I don't see this a lot on the website that they are divided in categories in this way. So I go back to the backend to WooCommerce settings, products, display, I want to show the products only. You can sort them by name, popularity, average rating, and other stuff. But the visitor can also change that over here. If you use the Envelope theme, you can change the column count. So I could say four columns, save it, refresh. And you see there are now four in a row. There are also plugins that can do that for you. If you don't have the info theme or maybe a different premium theme that can do that. I want to change back to three. So I go to the back end. I scroll down and I select three. Save it. Now if I view the card over here. I want to give some discount to people using coupon codes. How can you use them? Go to the back end of your website. To WooCommerce coupons over here. So let's add our first coupon by clicking this button. I call this one 10%. You can give a description, get 10% off using this coupon code. And you have three tabs over here, general. What kind of discount is it? It's percentage, fixed car discount or fixed product discount. So, so it can be fixed amount of money or fixed product discount. So it can be discount for a certain product. I will use percentage. The amount is 10%. A coupon code gives you the possibility to give a free shipping by checking this. And if someone puts 10%, then they will get free shipping. So you could also say free shipping here and then leave this empty and also check this. You can select a certain time for a coupon code, for instance, within 48 hours. So it can be until the sixth in two days. Let's take a look at restrictions. You can say the coupon code will be available with a minimum amount spent of $20 or a maximum of $100. You can say if you use this coupon code, you cannot use any other coupon code anymore. So I check this. So they cannot say I want 10% off and then I want $10 off and then they use three different coupon codes and get a lot of discount. So check this if you want this to be the only option for a coupon code. You can exclude sale items. So I have a few sale items. Here are those two. You can exclude them. I don't do that. And you can also assign the coupon code to certain products or you can exclude products. So maybe you want to give discount to all the products except for the Skype session. And then you can say exclude Skype and click this one or product categories or exclude categories or email restrictions. So for some customers, you can say customer 30 at Gmail will not get any discount with this coupon code. I go to the third tab, usage limits. 
you can say this coupon code can be used for 10 times so you can send an email to your email list you can say you know what the next 10 people get a discount of 10 percent when they use this coupon code so go to the store quickly otherwise you will be too late you can also say the discount will be only available for maximum of three items so if i buy five items then i will get discount on only three items and i can say you can use it only one time per user or unlimited times per user i publish it I refresh the card. We have an order of $15 and I say 10% apply coupon. Now it's still 15 over here, but if I scroll down, it says coupon 10% and 10% $1.50 will be the discount. So now it's a total of $13.50. Let's add another one, add a coupon code. And this one is 10 dollars get a discount of ten dollars the discount type is fixed the amount is 10 you can say allow free shipping and everything is fine with me this works for everybody and it has no limits so i say publish and because at the 10 percent coupon we said it can only be used as one code so there can no second code be applied if i type this in over here ten dollars apply it it says sorry coupon code ten percent has already been applied and cannot be used in conjunction with other coupon codes so i remove this one and i go for ten dollars apply coupon and now it's only five dollars so that's how it works one other option ebook get discount on the ebook and i say fixed product discount of ten dollars use restriction only for the product how this one no exclusion because this is the only one included so the rest is excluded automatically and let's see what happens i publish it so if i go to my cart i will continue shopping i at the skype session and this hoodie and i want to view the cart right now and i want to apply the coupon code ebook and let's see what happens. You see the coupon ebook can be in conjunction with the $10 because we have no restrictions and it says $10 discount. But if I remove the ebook, it says it is invalid. So only when somebody buys the ebook, then you can apply the coupon code. So in that way you can assign a coupon code to a certain product. That's how it works. I remove everything. So let's take a look now to shipping rates. How can we do that? Let's go to the back end. I close this one and I go to plugins, add new. And I search for easy table rate shipping. And I'm searching for this one of Jam plugins. And I click on install now. It's a free version with an upgrade to a pro version but we don't need the pro version. I activate it. So let's go to WooCommerce settings to shipping and here it is table rate. And I want to say enable this shipping method. Checkout title can be UPS or FedEx or how you want to call it. I call it UPS. You can have a handling fee of two dollars let's try it for a second it is taxable and the table rates are shipping condition countries zone and name i want to add a new one add new shipping zone and it will be the united states and it can be based on the weight or on the total price let's start with the total price here again i need to select the united states and then we can start. 
So the minimum value is zero and the maximum value is 49.99. What will the shipping rate be? I think $5 should be fine. I just want to illustrate it. Don't take a look at the exact numbers. I'm just illustrating how it works. So from $50 until $99.99, .99, it will be $10 of shipping rate. And from 100 and further, this icon, it means unlimited, or you could say this one, you pay nothing. So let's see how it works. Save the changes. And now I go to the cart, I go to the shop again, and I will buy a hoodie. It's $30. I go and view the cart. And based on that, it's between zero and $50. So we get a $5 shipping rate plus the $2 handling fee over here. So it will be $7. If I would say I get one more, it's 60, then it's between 50 and $100. So it should be $12 in total. So I say update cart. And now it's $12. And if I buy two more, it should be free. And then you only have the handling fee. So you could maybe say if you want to, if you want to remove the handling fee, minus two. Let's see if that works. Refresh, shipping, UPS, and there's no cost involved. So that's how it works. You can add different countries and stuff. The next thing I want to do, I want to do it based on the weight. And I want to remove this, delete, select the zones. I want to add a new one, and this time based on the total weight, the total amount of pounds. So here I say, United States, and here's the country, United States. The weight is pounds, a minimum of zero pounds, and a maximum of 2,99 pounds is $5. I add a new one, which is between three pounds and 5,99 pounds is $10, and from six, until 9.99 it is $15 and after that from 10 to infinity it is $0. I save the changes. What will happen? I have six hoodies over here. I refresh it and it costs $5. That's because we did not assign a weight to this hoodie. So I open it in a new tab by clicking here and holding command. I click on edit product. I scroll down and here at shipping, the weight is, let's say one pound. I don't think it's correct, but it's just for illustration purposes. I update it. So if I go to the cart and I would say, I have three hoodies I want to buy. Based on these settings, it should be three pounds and it should be $10. So here should appear $10. I update the card and it says $10. If I have one less, then it's a total of two pounds, which is $5. So I say update. And now it's $5. And if I would say I want to buy 10, I update the card. And now there's no cost involved because I like getting big orders. And if I get big orders, I want to give people free shipping. So that's how it works with shipping. If you take a look at the total price or the amount of weight. Okay, let's take a look at taxes. So if I go to WooCommerce, settings over here click on the tab tax and let's take a look at the tax options prices entered with tax right now if you take a look at our shop they're entered without tax 
you could say I want to show the tax. Calculate tax based on shipping address or customer address or the shop base address. I use customer shipping address. The shipping tax class, you can say all my products are at a standard rate of 7% or something else. It can be a reduced rate or a zero rate or it depends on the product. So I have products that can be 21% of taxes. And I have products that are 6% of taxes. Then I say shipping tax class based on card items. Additional tax classes, we have reduced rate, and zero rate and the standard rate. I leave it as this. I don't use it, so I could remove it. But I will leave it over here. Display prices in the shop, including taxes or excluding taxes. I would say excluding taxes, but then on the card and the checkout, it could be including taxes. Price display, you can change it. Right now it could say inclusive VAT, VAT. If you're in a different country, you could say BTW. We say that in Dutch. Display tax totals, itemized or a single total. So this is per product and this is a total. I leave it itemized. I save the changes. And now let's add standard rates to our products. So insert a row and you can say from which country you are. So if I would say US, United States, you can have a state. Per state you have different taxes. So let's go for California. If you leave this empty or the asterisk, then it means it will be including all the zip codes in California and all the cities. And the rate, let's say it's 10, so 10% 10 taxes. The tax name can be taxes and it can have a priority. If you have more taxes for one product, then you can have priority. Which taxes need to be applied first and second, then you can do that. I will use only one, so I leave it as this. Compound means that if you have two kinds of taxes, will the second taxes be applied to the amount that will appear after the first taxes. So for instance, there's 10% taxes for a $100 item. So it will be $110. And if you say compound and you have more taxes of 10%, that means that 10% will be applied to that $110. So we will have to pay $121. If you don't check this, then it will be $120. Maybe it's a little bit complicated. You can also take a look over here. Will the taxes be applied to shipping or not? You can find this all on the internet. I uncheck this and I save the changes. And if I take a look now, you see the prices are changed. This was $30, now it's 33 because of the 10%. So if I would change this to 20 and I save it, and this will be $36. So that's how it works. I bring this back to 10. But it can be that you also have reduced rates. So in the Netherlands, I pay 21% on all kinds of stuff. If I buy a new computer, I have to pay 21% extra. But if I buy a book, then I need to pay 6% extra. So I can go to reduced rates. Let's say it's in the United States. I can say US, California. And this rate is 5% Texas. I could say book taxes or something else. I just say taxes. Priority two, no compound and not for the shipping. I save it. So we have the reduced rate and we have the standard rate. This one is 10, this one is five. If I refresh it, it's still the same. Why we need to assign the tax rate to every product. So hoodies is under the category stuff. I know this is not a real book with paper and stuff, but Let's imagine it is, then I can click on the book and I can add the tax rate, edit products. So this should be reduced rate. How can you do that? Scroll down. It is taxable and the tax class is reduced rate. So if I view the product, it is $15 with 5% extra. It should be $15.75. So I go to view the card and right now it says $15.75 and if there for some reason should be no taxes applied to an item then you can click on it edit the product scroll down and select the class zero rate update 
view the product and go to view card. And now it's still 15. So here is 10% applied. Here was 5% applied. And here is also 10%. And that's how it works. And then here you see the total amount is $119.50. And that is $9.50 of taxes. So that's how it works with taxes. And I want to go and take a look at all the settings of WooCommerce. So if I go to WooCommerce settings over here, let's take a look at them. I don't use all the settings, but I will just walk through them and talk a little bit about them. And if you want to know something about it, you can hover over the question mark and it will explain itself. The base location of the store, you can select it. It's in the United States in California. You can sell to all countries or a specific country. For instance, the United States and the Netherlands. Or if you remove this, you can say, I want to sell to the whole world, to all countries, except for. So you can sell it everywhere in the world, except for Burkina Faso. The shipping locations, you can say to all the countries I sell it or ship to a specific country only. I would let this be the same as this option. So to all countries you sell to, except for Burkina Faso. The false customer location. So I would turn this on, geolocate. Then your computer will know where they are buying from. Enable taxes. Yes. You can have a store notice. So you can check this and save it. And then I go to Safari. And I'll get a message over here. This is a demo store for testing purposes. Dismiss. I don't like it at all. If you want to use it, you can use it. I don't like it, so I uncheck it. Here you can change the currency. Right now the current position is at the left with a dollar without a space and a point over here. You can change the point to comma. You can change this to a euro. Maybe you want to have a separator over here or you want to have the currency logo at the right. And if you save it, it looks like this. So if I take a look at the website, the logo is after that, it's the euros now. There's a comma here. So in every country that can be different. I will change it back. Let's take a look at products. The wage unit, you can change it. We set it up in the configuration of WooCommerce. The dimension unit, you can enable reviews. You can demand ratings or you can uncheck this so it will not be mandatory. Show verified owner. That means that people need to be accepted before they can send a review. Then we go to display. We have been through this already. The shop page is this one. You can select a different one. You can show products or categories or both. And how do you want to show them? Show subcategories or subcategories and products. In what order do you want to show them? What I like if I go to the shop and I say I want to add this ebook to the cart, it will be added to the cart. But if I say redirect to the cart page after successful addition, I can save the changes. I can refresh this page. And now I say add to cart. I will go directly to the cart page. It can be nice. I uncheck it. Enable I add to cart. That's what we just saw, the animation over here. I want to keep that. Product images. Before we started adding products, I changed this all to 1200. If you want to change it right now, then you need to download a plugin, add new, search for regenerate thumbnails, install it, activate it, then go to tools, regenerate thumbnails, and you can regenerate all thumbnails. And then all the images will be resized based on your settings over here. This is what I've shown before. This is an Mfold edition. You can change the column count. I save the changes and I go to inventory. Enable stock management. You can check it or uncheck it. Hold stock minutes. If somebody buys a hoodie and it does not pay within 60 minutes, the stock will stay the same. But if he buys it and after a minute he pays and the transaction is complete, then the stock goes down. So here you can decide how fast somebody must pay after purchasing. So after five minutes, it will decide if the stock will be manipulated with minus one or that it will stay the same. 
Enable low stock notification. Enable out of stock notifications. Here you can change your email address. Low stock threshold if you have a big store and you sell five of the same items per day. I would say if you have only 10 left, then you need to get an email. And then the out of stock threshold, it's not entirely true, but it, this is a message for if you only have five left, then you need to get an email that is out of stock or that it will be out of stock. And then you can do something with your supply. Out of stock visibility, hide out out of stock items from the catalog. If you check this, then when I buy all these hoodies, you will not see it anymore over here. I don't like it, so I uncheck it. I want people to see it's out of stock so they can come back later and buy it. Stock display format. Right now it says there are 10 in stock, like 10 in stock, 12 in stock. You can also say only two left in stock. So if the supply is low, you can say only two. I think that's a great option because then people can buy it earlier because they think, oh no, maybe I'm too late if I wait another day or you show it not at all. Save it. If you get a downloadable product, what kind of method of downloading do you want? I like force download. That means that when you click on the button, it will automatically go to your downloads. It's a force download way. You can have different options, but I like this one. Downloads require login. You can check that if you want to. And people can have access to the downloadable products after payment. Yes, I like that also. Tax. I will skip shipping. We just did. Let's go to the checkout. Enable the use of coupons. Yes. Calculate coupon discount sequentially. That means if you have one coupon code and it gives you discount, then the second coupon code will be applied to the complete price after the first coupon code. I hope you still understand it. I don't check this. I leave it as it is. Enable guest checkout. You can uncheck it and then people need to become a member if they buy something. If they do that, then they come back later easily by just logging in and then all their information is stored on your website. Force secure checkout. If you have SSL, you can check it over here. I don't have it. But if you have it, then you can check it. But you need to have a certificate for it. Checkout page. These are the pages that are made when we are configuring WooCommerce. I leave it as this. And this is important, the terms and conditions. So if I would say services is the terms and conditions page, and I save it and I go to the checkout. Then here, if I scroll down, I have to say I have read and accepted the terms and conditions. And if I click over here, I go to the services page. So actually this should be the terms and conditions page. Checkout endpoints, I leave this as it is. And here we have the payment methods. So here you see check payments and PayPal. Check payments, if I click on it, you can also see that over here there are a few tabs. I can disable it by unchecking this and I save it. And I refresh this. And now PayPal is the only option. So I go to PayPal. And here it says it is enabled. The title will be PayPal and you can change this description if you want to. Here it says you can pay with PayPal, but also with credit card. Your PayPal email, this needs to be the same as your PayPal account. So I change it. I uncheck these. And here again, the same email address you have at your PayPal account. This is optional. The PayPal identity token, you can find it at PayPal. You need to go to profile, profile and settings, my selling tools over here. And then here at website preferences, update and check auto return. So if someone purchased an item, they will be returning to your website and that is 30corp.com. I turn this on. It gives you some extra information when somebody purchases your item. I leave this as it is. And I just say save. Then I go one more time to my selling tools, to website preferences, update. I scroll down and at payment data transfer, 
you see the token. I copy it, I go to WooCommerce and I paste it and I save it and I go to accounts. My account page, if I go to ferdicorp.com forward slash my dash account, you get a nice overview per client. So when they buy something, they get an account and they can go to their own account and there they can see their order history. There are no orders yet. They can see their downloads. So if they've downloaded an ebook, they can download it over here again. And that is the page over here, my account. I see no reason to change this. Enable customer registration on the checkout page. Yes. Display returning customers login reminder on the checkout. That means if you buy something for the second time at the checkout page, you will get a prompting. Hey, do you want to log in? And then you don't need to fill out all these details again because you log in over here and then all your information is over here already. Account creation, generate automatic username from customer email. Yes, you can give them a password, but they can also create it themselves. My account endpoints, I leave this as it is. I save it. I go to emails. Those are the emails you will get when somebody buys something. To which email address does it need to go? I need to change this one. Configure it. And I can say info at Ferdy Corpusuk. The subject, new customer order with the order date and the order number. With the email heading, you can change this. What kind of email type do you want to have? HTML. And I save the changes. If you want to change the information on your email, you should change the PHP file. I see no reason why you should do that. So I leave it as it is. And I go back to emails. And if I scroll down, it's from Ferdy Corpsuk. I can remove the media from the address info at ferdycorpsuk.com. You can have a header image. Why do we want to have that? If you take a look over here, this is a preview of your email. It looks like WooCommerce because these are the colors of WooCommerce. I go to Enfold in the new tab. I go to General Styling. I grab this color. I close this. I close this. And I change the base color to this one. Here's a header image. So I go to Media in the new tab. And I search for my logo. It's this one and I copy the URL over here, copy it, close it and I paste the link over here and then the footer text. Thank you for doing business with us. So I think it looks a lot better now. I change this to 444, 444, it's the same color as in my logo. I save it one more time and now. Over here, it looks better. So these are the kind of emails you will get when somebody purchases something. Thank you for doing business with us. So API, we'll leave it as it is. So right now I close these tabs. I go to the homepage. Meanwhile, I logged out. So I'm here as a visitor. I go to our shop. Here you see a nice icon. So people can see it's a web shop. I want to buy this ebook. I add it to the cart. And I want to buy a t-shirt. I select the options and I want to buy a white t-shirt that is XL and it's more expensive because it's bigger and I want to buy two. Add to the cart. And you know what? I go back to the shop and I want to order a Skype session. Why not? Add to the cart and I want to take a look at my card. I view the card. And based on the weight of these two t-shirts, it is $5 shipping cost, a total of $150. And I want to apply a coupon code with $10 discount. So I type in $10, apply the coupon code. And now you see I get $10 discount. That's great. Proceed to the checkout. It's my first time here. My first name, last name. Maybe I have a company name. I'm from the United States, New York Street somewhere in New York. My email address Ferdinand at my test server.nl. 
I need to create a password. Ship to different address, no. Order notes, no. I want to pay with PayPal. I've read and agreed to all the terms and services and conditions. I proceed to PayPal. So let's go to my email and it says your account on Ferdy Corpsuk Media. Welcome to Ferdy Corpsuk Media. Thanks for creating this account. Your username is Ferdinand. And I can go to my account. And here I can see my orders. And here it is, May the 4th. It's pending payment. I did not pay. <laughs> I can pay it or I can cancel it or I can view it. And here's my order. Okay, one more thing. I bought this ebook and maybe I want to give a review. So I go to the shop. I scroll down to the ebook. I click on it. And here there are no reviews yet. I want to give it the five stars. And I say this book opened my eyes. Ferdy has a great way of explaining things about becoming online entrepreneur and then I submit it and then it says your review is awaiting approval so I will log in now and what do I see I have a comment over here so I click on it from Ferdinand at my test server I can approve it I can reply I can do an edit, I can send it to the spam or to the trash and I want to approve it. After that, I want to reply and say thank you so much. I appreciate that. And then I can give a reply. And what do we see now? I go to the image. I go to the product and it's a five star product. So I click on it and here it says five stars, one customer review and it's over here and here's my reaction and that's how it works. If I would go to the backend to widgets and to the shop overview page and I scroll down and I search for the top rated products over here, shop overview page at widget then the ebook should be on top so let's take a look top rated products ebook how to become an online entrepreneur because it has the best review it's also the only review so if you have a big web shop with a lot of products and a lot of reviews then this is a really nice widget Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I hope you learned a lot. Good luck with your webshop. I hope you sell a lot of items. And please like this video, subscribe for more upcoming videos, and then I will see you next time. Bye bye.